So we are now going live on YouTube. Again, give me just a few more moments to post the live stream links on our social media. And then Steve, I will give you the go ahead in just a moment. Good morning, ASL interpreter. Thanks for doing this. And commissioners, just a reminder to turn your videos on uh, so that the public knows that you're there. Morning, Anthony. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Is there any word that Rebecca wasn't going to be with us today? Nope, but I'll, I'll be texting her offline, make sure she has what she needs. Okay, Steve, we are all set to begin. Good morning, everybody. Uh, as chair of the commission, I welcome you to uh, this meeting. Uh, all of us here uh, on Zoom, as well as uh, the public out on YouTube or wherever you're viewing it from, I welcome you. Uh, this is a Zoom webinar is being uh, live streamed to Facebook and YouTube. For anyone in the public watching who would prefer to watch via a different platform uh, they're currently using, please visit our social media at redistricting MI to find a link for either viewing uh, on YouTube. Our live stream today includes uh, closed captioning. <coughs> Excuse me. We have ASL interpretation available for this meeting. If you are a member of the public watching who would like easier viewing options for the ASL interpreter on your screen, please email us at redistricting at michigan.gov and we will provide you with additional viewing options. Similarly, members of the public who would like to access translation services during the webinar can email us Again, at redistricting at michigan.gov for details on how to access language translation services available for this meeting. Translation services are available for both Spanish and Arabic. Please email us and we will provide you with a unique link and call in information. We certainly want you to be able to uh, view and understand what we're talking about. This meeting is being recorded and will be a available at redistrictingmich.org uh, for viewing at a later date. This meeting is also being transcribed and those transcriptions will be made available and posted on redistrictingmichigan.org along with written public comment submissions. Members of the media who may have questions uh, before, during or after the meeting should direct those questions to Tracy Weimer, Media Relations Director at the Department of State. Members of the media should have her contact information. For purposes of the public watching and the public record, I would ask the uh, State Department staff to take note of the commissioners present. I would ask at this time for a roll call. Commissioners, please uh, unmute and say present when I call your name. Anthony Ede. Present. Brittany Kellum. Present. Cynthia Orton. Present. Doug Clark. Present. Dustin Witches. Present. Aaron Wagner. Present. Janice Vallette. Present. Juanita Curry. Present. MC Rothhorn. Present. Rebecca Satella. 
I believe she's joining any minute. Uh, Rhonda Lang. Present. Richard Weiss. And Steve Lett. Present. All right, I would uh, have everyone look at the agenda, which was provided uh, to us. Uh, if uh, everyone has had an opportunity to look that over, uh, or is there anything that we need to add uh, either under new business or old business? Hearing none, I would uh, entertain a motion to accept the agenda as presented. So moved. And a second? A second. All right, all in favor say aye. 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 All opposed the same sign. The agenda is adopted. Um, the minutes have been uh, sent to us and uh, hopefully everybody's had an opportunity to look those over. Are there any additions, deletions, or corrections on the minutes? Hearing none, I would entertain a motion <clears throat> to accept the minutes as presented. Motion to accept. Second. Second. Uh, all in favor say aye. 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 All oppose the same sign. Uh, now we have uh, an opportunity for public comment and I'm informed that uh, we do have some persons who uh, would like to make public comment. Because this is a virtual meeting, members of the public uh, have to sign up in advance to address the commission. Staff at the department <clears throat> will unmute each member of the public for up to two minutes on a first come first serve basis. This means that members of the public will be called on in order in the order in which they signed up to address the commission. To those members of the public participating in public comment, please note you will have no more than two minutes to address the commission this morning. You can also submit your thoughts to the commission uh, and the public by emailing redistricting at michigan.gov. The Department of State will provide your written thoughts to the commission. By indicating in that email that you would like to submit your written comment as public comment, it will be included in the online meeting archive for the commission. Public comment sign up links are also posted at redistricting Michigan social media pages on Facebook and Twitter at redistricting MI. Now, I would like to recognize Sally Marsh from the Department of State, and she will handle the specifics on the public comment. Sally. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, as was noted, individuals who signed up uh, will be now allowed to do so. I believe we have two of the people um, who had signed up um, here present today. So first, um, I'll go in order of, of submission. Uh, if you're on a computer, you'll be prompted by the Zoom app to unmute your microphone and speak. If you're on the phone, a voice will say the host would like you to speak and prompt you to press star six to unmute. Uh, I will call on you uh, by your first name. And um, please note that if we unmute you and you have audio issues, uh, we'll, we'll go to the next person and then we'll try to troubleshoot with you in the meantime. Uh, so first up is Joe, Joe Spaulding. Joe, can you hear us? I can, thank you, Sally. Great, thanks. You have two minutes. Wonderful. Hi, um, my name is Joe Spaulding, and uh, I understand that uh, you are performing the important work of selecting an executive director uh, in this meeting and the next. Uh, I want, wanted to call in and uh, say a few words about that. I'm a professional political operative. At the local level, this means I sometimes help candidates get elected or not elected 
to partisan office or nonpartisan office. I've only ever worked for candidates who lean in one specific political direction. That's my choice. And I'm far from unique in my field, but my point here is very simple. If someone is elected to a nonpartisan office, that should place increased suspicion on them that they are partisan. If they have been elected mayor in say a West Michigan city, a place that I have lived almost all my life, that was 20 years in Holland and 10 years in Baxter neighborhood in GR, and they have donated to say Rick Snyder, the Michigan GOP, and a list of Republican candidates long enough to make the book of numbers blush, they're probably too partisan to be in charge of this board. As someone who went to college with Katie Fahey, and as the guy who ran the spreadsheets, wrote the communications book and designed the record-breaking petition campaign uh, that resulted in this commission, I was thrilled to learn uh, when our lawyer, Jim Lancaster, wasn't able to pursue the ED position because he was too biased for the commission. Uh, that means that you guys are doing due diligence in, in, in trying to make sure we get the right executive director here. As someone who knows the history of the forced gentrification in the East Grand Rapids and Grand Rapids border area, and who knows that that is connected to a prior failed attempt at gerrymandering the last competitive district in the state, that's the 76th house seat. Um, and if you look back at the videos, Katie ran across three districts at the 76th house street, it's shaped like a question mark around Grand Rapids. And as a resident of Baxter neighborhood and an Aquinas college grad, I'm employing imploring this body to closely examine the partisan reasons for every remaining candidate that they may have for seeking this executive director role. As a side, I'm very happy that this meeting is already getting lots of attention online. More transparency is better for everybody. That's why I worked pro bono for six months to make sure Prop 2 was passed. That's also why I was thrilled to see the public comment section in the Wayne County Board of Canvassers meeting where first the uh, reprehensible decision uh, that happened there uh, this week. Mm -hmm. so, um, thank you all Thanks for your service. Thanks for your diligence. And um, please be very, very careful when you're making your final decision for executive director because they have a lot of power in this commission. Mr. Spalding, thank you. Uh, your time has concluded. Uh, next in line is Nancy Wang. Nancy, can you hear us? Ms. Wang, can you hear us? Uh -oh. We can hear you. Can you hear us? Yes. Great. Uh, go ahead. You have two minutes. Good morning and thank you. I'm Nancy Wang, Executive Director of Voters Not Politicians. Our campaign was inspirational because it was uniting. We brought everyday people together from across the political spectrum to create a fair, impartial, and transparent redistricting process that serves all voters and ensures fair representation to all voters, regardless of who we are, where we live, and who we vote for. As you contemplate who you'll hire to be your executive director, please look at not just what the applicants say about themselves, but also examine the information being offered by the public. When a member of the public raises concerns that a candidate is too partisan to do to this job well, or has a troubling history of alienating colleagues and stakeholders, it's important to listen. They're speaking from their desire to keep this redistricting process in the public confidence and to protect the integrity of this great institution that we've so carefully built. The public will be providing critical in input to you every step of this journey to bring fair maps to Michigan. And that's the process playing out is exactly as it was intended. You have the power to hire. It's entirely within your discretion to choose who you'd like. And of course, there's no perfect candidate that's going to appease everybody. But there are still right and wrong choices. The right choice will continue to bring voters together. And the wrong choice will continue to tear us apart. We hope as you're making your hiring decision that you'll keep in mind that the public's trust in you and our new process is paramount. So when you're hiring an executive director, please choose someone who can skillfully help you navigate these uncharted waters but also someone who can help you build trust and inspire confidence in voters, regardless of who we are, where we live, and who we vote for. Thank you so much for your service. Perfect timing, Ms. Wang. Your, your two minutes has concluded. And I believe the, the third person who had signed up uh, is not present at the meeting um, in this moment. So 
uh, that concludes our live public comment for the day. And commissioners, you received other written public comment uh, via email that we'll be posting on our website as well. All right, thank you, Sally. We appreciate that. And thank you to uh, Mr. Spaulding and Ms. Wang for their comments uh, to the commission. We certainly uh, hear those loud and clear and uh, we have in fact uh, made that exact consideration, uh, we hope, uh, in who we uh, choose. First up for old business is a report from the staff uh, regarding administrative items. Uh, who's up on that? Hi, commissioners, me again. Uh, so really briefly, a couple of quick updates. Um, your phones uh, should be actually in the mail as we speak. Uh, Verizon is working on those deliveries. So um, watch for a FedEx or UPS delivery of your phones. Um, and then you should also receive communication from the DTMB, that's the Department of Technology Management and Budgets Smart Device Support Team. Uh, who will reach out to you to make sure that you have everything you need to set it up properly uh, and then you don't have any technical issues there. Um, I think some of you may have started to see in your email inboxes the beginnings of uh, the ticket, uh, which is kind of how the, the Department of Technology and Management and Budget uh, tracks individual um, items and make sure that they follow them through till the end. So if you see emails like that, keep an eye out. Um, and if you have any questions, of course, do reach out. Um, your computers have been ordered. Uh, well, they've been approved to be ordered. So um, more to come on that. I am sure they will be shipped uh, in the coming days. And um, your pay. So we've been working with Kelly Services on the paperwork to ensure that um, you are properly noted within their system and within the legislative council system um, as, you know, in, in a way that fits the role that you have. Um, it kind of goes to technical uh, jargon, but we're just working with them to make sure that you aren't treated as a typical temporary employee, but that you're actually, that they understand the role that you play um, and the sort of compensation that you are, um, that you are uh, eligible for. So I expect in the next few days um, that I will be potentially emailing all of you with paperwork or other updates that you'll need to maybe fill out um, or um, kind of other things to actually fully get this, um, get this moving. So stay tuned, but there's a lot of movement there. We're just working with their legal team to make sure um, that everybody's on the same page and that way uh, you'll be set to go moving forward. Um, and then I will, I can give an inter, uh, a sort of overview of the draft interview questions and hiring process documents uh, that we sent to you and that is available for the public to view online uh, once we get to that point in the agenda. So does anybody have any questions? Great. Okay. <clears throat> Correspondence, it says next. I wonder if that's related to the correspondence that Sally did on my behalf. Yes, well. if I could just jump in really quickly, commissioners. Uh, last meeting, there was some correspondence uh, that you all wanted to talk about um, and didn't have time to talk about in the last meeting. So this is that opportunity to talk about that re research request that was mentioned um, and mm -hmm. any of the other correspondence that you'd like to discuss. Okay, so MC had some questions on that research uh, proposal. Uh, MC, do you have comments on that? I, I thought it was addressed appropriately, and 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 frankly, I think it, I'm I'm excited that we have um, not only an organization but educational institutions that could potentially you know work with this um, and and create more public education as well as our own education. I feel I feel like it's an important step. I'd, I'd like to. My concerns have been addressed, and I feel. I feel good with you know going forward sports. So I would be in support of doing this. Any anybody have any questions? Uh Rhonda. Mine, as far as being part of a study, I am not interested personally. Um, no offense. When I took this, you know, when I applied for this, it it was with 
a job in mind, and that job was to do the districting lines. And I'm not looking to do any extra things outside of that. And that's just me personally, but I just wanted my thoughts out there on it. Any other thoughts? I haven't, uh, I don't know. I, I suppose uh, a, a study is not a bad thing, but certainly if Rhonda, if you didn't wish to participate, I don't think there's anything that says you have to with them. So you could certainly let them know up front that uh, when you're sending out your uh, survey questionnaires, skip me. Okay. Uh, any other questions? I don't know that we necessarily need. Um, well, does anyone want to make a, anybody want to make a motion to uh, proceed with this uh, study? And let these people know. Yeah, I'll, no. I'll make the motion that uh, we proceed with uh, Dave Dulio's uh, request for a uh, study. All right. Uh, second. I'll second. All right. Uh, any further discussion? I have one question. Yes, Doug. If this gets approved, uh, how is Dave going to be contacted? And who's, whose responsibility is that? Uh, I would assume that either MC or Sally would do that. Sally, I would defer to you. I'm happy to to contact him and kind of get clarity on next steps so um, we can figure out if it makes more sense for him to be in direct contact with the Department of State and then we share back with you um, or or something else in writing. So yeah. um, I'm and, happy to do that follow up and, and let you all know. And, uh, and I see Anthony. Sorry, Steve. Go ahead. I was going to say I it's been a little while since I looked at their proposal. Uh, I guess it would be useful for uh, the commission to have a, kind of an outline of what their process and timeline is going to be before we would give final approval. I can okay. absolutely ask them for that. Okay, good. All right. Uh, you can, I, I assume, well, I don't know how fast they'll be back, but whenever they get back, then we can put it back on the agenda. Anthony's got something. Who? Anthony. Ah, Anthony. Anthony. Hey, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes. Well, I have some mic problems, I think. Um, if you could, Sally, if you could also ask um, what uh, journals or conferences uh, they are planning to submit uh, the results of this research to, for publication, uh, that would be uh, something we probably would like to know. Absolutely. Usually how, um, you know, a re a, like a scientific research project works is, you know, first you, you normally uh, have an abstract, you know, with your methods attached to it. And then after you're done compiling those methods and examining the results, there's usually a discussion section um, and then after you compile all of that and it passed different statistical analysis, uh, it's then submitted to journals for publication, uh, just so everybody knows. So I think it might be important for us to know where they're planning to send it to. All right. Okay, anything else before we move on to uh, questions and rating system for the candidates? Sally, were you going to uh, help us out with this? Doug, first. Doug. Yeah, um, going back to correspondence, there was some other correspondence that got submitted um, from a couple other different people. Are we going to discuss that at all? I mean, one of them, as I recall, uh, an individual from Wayne State was asking for Anthony to come down and talk. Uh, we got another one from Tom McMillan, who used to be a state rep, uh, talking about his uh, opinions on how the executive director should be selected and so forth. Sure. So they, they want Anthony. Anthony, what do you think? Um, at this point, I'll probably 
have to decline that offer. Um, I don't want there to be any like conflict of interest between you know the school and uh, this board. So I myself will have to decline. But if one of you want to, uh, you know, go in and give a talk, well, I think well, you might want to. Okay, MC. Anthony, would you be open to trying to do something like we did with our committees where there was like one of each party, so to speak? Um, and so that that would be less a commissioner, but more of a panel of commissioners. I guess what I'm thinking about is, are you declining because you don't have the time to do it? Or is it more like you just don't want to be a solo? And because if you don't want to be solo, I'd, I'd be very, I think you're nonpartisan, right? Yes, but it, it's not really about that. I just, okay. Okay. Yeah, you know, I just kind of will have to decline. Okay. Rhonda? I'm just wondering, as far as that goes, going in front of and talking to the school and everything, could that walk a thin line between how we're not allowed to discuss commission matters? I mean, could that be a potential issue for us legally doing that? I assume if you go in and give a talk, somebody's going to ask questions. And I mean, could that hold us open to potential violations of our constitution? Mm -hmm. I think I see the same thing, Rhonda. And that's kind of why I'm interested in starting it now, because I think that we're going to get out into the public and we're going to have to gather information and we're going to have to try to understand how we're collecting this. And so part of me wants to do a test run and try to make a mistake early. And, and I'm, I'm not suggesting we make a mistake, but what I'm suggesting is we're going to have to figure this out. And so part of me wants to figure it out while we, and maybe we should wait until, I just thought about, maybe we should wait till we have our staff who can advise us more. Um, but it's, it does feel like as commissioners, I don't want to be, I don't want to be so on, right reticent to go out and approach our citizens, our fellow citizens, because we're trying to be careful and protecting and be independent. I, I, we're going to have to take risks, um, in order to sort of like be as inclusive as possible and try to get all of our citizens and to trust us. And so I think what I mean is it's not just about inviting people. I think we also, hey, we have to go out. Right? And, and find the people in the places where, that aren't typically approached and understood and, or even want to be approached, right? And, and I think we have to respect that. You know, I don't want to suggest we have to you know, find everybody who doesn't want to be found. What I'm suggesting is this kind of thing could be important for us to test the waters. And that's why I want to try it. And I, I respect Anthony's decision. Um, and if we can talk about how we could potentially address their request for commissioners, that's that's what I would suggest is that we try to figure out if, if one or three or, or none, or, you know, if it's all going to be zoom, you know, I'm imagining it's going to be relatively easy for us to do it, but I'd, uh, I'd, I'd entertain that idea and I'd, I'd be open to trying. I'd be, and I'm a Democrat. Doug. Yeah, I, I agree with you MC. Um, we do have to give it a try. Um, However, this may snowball on us too. Yeah. And we may have so many requests that we're not able to handle that as well as the things that we're here to do. Thank you for that. Yeah. Juanita. I, I can easily see it snowball. Juanita. Yes, I was thinking that we should probably wait for till we get the whole staff together before we attempt to do something like that because they would further advise us on what to do and how to go about doing that. So I would choose to uh, wait to get the whole staff together before we started that. Any other? Ah, Anthony? Yeah, after we get our general counsel in, um, I, might re I might be willing to reconsider. Um, I do know Dr. Timothy Bledsoe uh, he's actually the one of the advisors for my little sister who's currently an undergrad. So uh, there's a little bit of a relationship there. So uh, after we get our GC in, I may be willing to change my mind. Sally. I was just going to sort of say something to that effect and also say that once you have your executive director and your communications and outreach uh, director, you, um, your staff can set up a system through which they sort through requests and, and sort through, you know, where you go, when, 
Um, that's what a lot of public officials have in some capacity um, is a system for identifying where you're going, why you're going there, and you know whether it's within the sort of legal confines or perception confines of your role. So um, I think it's great conversation, but I just wanted to put out there that there are sort of systems you can put in place, especially once you have staff. I appreciate all this conversation. I'm, yeah, I, I don't, I, I would tend to agree that let's wait till we have a staff and a system in a way of man, yeah, not let it snowball. <clears throat> I, just, two, just one quick thing. I also think from a, um, a practical standpoint, there just isn't that much for us to say right now. Um, so I would, that was my first thought when I saw it, unless it was going to be an opportunity where they kind of, ask the basic questions that some of us have already been exposed to in an, in an interview. Um, I can't see what, what use that would, I don't want to speak for, you know, the Wayne State community, but I just, we don't have a whole lot to say <laughs> at the moment that would, to me, lend to kind of like a mini lecture style or even like community, community conversation. Well, I'm sure we're going to get more uh, requests. And sure. the, the, one, the one thing that, that we have to, or at least that, comes to my mind is uh, nobody in Michigan has done this before. So we're just as expert as everybody else. Um, anything else, Doug, on, on uh, correspondence? Uh, well, let, let's, let me make one more comment on this item we're talking about. Is, are we going to have somebody get back to Wayne State and tell them that we've tabled this until uh, we, we until the organization matures further? And who is uh, going to do that? Sure. Sally, can you let Wayne State know that uh, we'll give it consideration, but not at this time? Yes. OK. OK. Anything um, else? I have nothing else on that. Uh, you asked me if there's any further things. There was a. Message from Tom McMillan. He used to be a state rep. Uh, actually, I know him or I've met him because uh, he was our state rep. And he had a suggestion, which I, I don't really agree with, but let me read it. It has to do with the executive director. I would like to add one option in the selection of the executive director, which would likely be very unconventional. That being to have co-executive directors and choose one who is clearly partisan Democrat and one's clearly partisan is Republican. Same basic concept that our committees are based off of. Um, I don't agree with that. I, I, I think it would be very difficult as an organization to work with two executive directors. Um, so I, I would say that uh, in my opinion that we should not pursue that direction at all. I would have to agree. I think we have the opportunity to be more decisive, but uh, Rhonda and Cynthia. I agree with Doug also, and I would also look at it uh, from a budget standpoint, that would mm -hmm. be two executive director salaries. So, you know, that starts adding up. That's a good point, Rhonda. Cynthia? I was just gonna say the same thing. Well, let's see, that's uh, three, three speeches against. Anybody wanna speak for it? Not hearing anybody, that one, Cynthia. Oh, I'll just also add, um, I understand the spirit with which it's trying to ha help us be nonpartisan. And maybe that would be something we would consider if we can't find one person that we feel could be nonpartisan, but I think we still have avenues we can try. Okay, anything else on correspondence? All right, I think we're back to Sally to help us with uh, the interview process. Thanks for keeping track of that, Doug. I'm sorry, what was that, MC? Just wanted to say thank you for tracking that and helping us through that, all the correspondence, not just the one. Oh, okay, great. You're welcome. All right, everyone. So just a, a kind of brief overview of the various uh, interview and hiring related documents uh, that we sent to all of you and for the public, these are posted online as well. Uh, so the draft questions. So it's a, it's a list of draft, 
draft questions based on some of the standard questions um, that the Department of State uses in different interview um, settings for this kind of a candidate. Um, you know, some of them were edited slightly based on this particular role. You may want to add a subject area um, or take away some of the questions listed here. Um, you know, for example, if there's something that was raised in public comment that you'd want every candidate to address, you could add a question to that effect. Um, the important thing, and I think it was outlined in the in the hiring tips uh, document, um, is just asking the same standard set of questions to every candidate, so that there's sort of equal opportunity um, to to talk and to provide their insight to the whole board um, or to the whole commission. Uh, the things that you all will want to determine beyond just what are the questions themselves is who asks each question. Um, and so, you know, are you going to have the same person asking each question each time? Um, who's going to start the interview, maybe preface it and, and you know, start with the first question. And um, just a note in terms of timing. Each interview is scheduled for 30 minutes. So with 13 questions, I included 13 questions um, because there are 13 of you. That said, with 13 questions, it's only about two minutes per question. So you may wanna do slightly less so that people have more time uh, to respond. Um, and then also in that document is a sort of basic rating system and key. Uh, the idea there is that it helps you kind of take more standard notes uh, for every person and then uh, reflect back on uh, what you thought during each of these interviews. Um, you know, food for thought, you all obviously can, can do whatever you want in terms of note taking and in terms of discussion. The thing that you'll, you know, probably want to discuss and decide is, uh, you know, having an agreement upon all of you in terms of how you're going to talk about it after the fact so that you um, have a way of discussing each candidate that's that's fair and you know is sort of representative of the actual interview uh, itself. And then just a couple other notes in terms of the other resources that were provided. Um, there's also kind of best practices like looking at people's online footprint um, or asking for references, that kind of thing. Um, so far, we've sort of done the review and now you're at the interview stage, but um, I just want to emphasize, you know, you don't need to make a decision today. If you get to the end of the interviews and there are open questions that you still have, there are multiple steps you could take, um, you know, between uh, interviews and hiring. Uh, and so just wanted to kind of make that explicit. There's different types of follow up you could do with these candidates or with other candidates uh, that would allow you to continue the process. So hopefully these interviews will be kind of a, a, an important data point in your decision-making process. Um, I just wanted to kind of give that overview, but really the floor is yours. Feel free to ask Mike or I any questions that you might have. I have one, I have one question, Sally. There were, um, in the emails, there were, I think two candidates, Jeanette and uh, Cheryl, who responded with additional information and not all of them. So I guess my question is, did you ask each candidate? Okay, they just, they just of their own volition gave it. And then uh, Brandon Bryce just gave a duplicate like a second time, the same, same stuff, is that right? Okay, thank you. Yes, yep. I believe there might've been like a small edit in his, but, um, okay. but yeah, all of those that were sent to you were sort of unprompted follow-ups uh, that they asked us to give to all of you. Rhonda. Sally, I want to know when were these possible questions posted online? I mean, is it something that every candidate could have seen ahead of time? So, you know what I mean? Could they have practiced up on the answers is what I'm wondering? It's a great question. I need to, I need to check. <laughs> um, I don't know off the top of my head. Rhonda, how would that influence you? Help me understand how I that see, might influence I see you. Mike also. You know, they want us to ask all of them, but I think sometimes you can tell when interviewing people, and I've been in interviews and done interviews, um, if they don't know the questions ahead of time, they're not prepared, you catch them off. 
they might stumble or you can just kind of tell that they're truly sincere in what they're saying and it isn't practiced, it isn't rehearsed. So that's why I asked that question because if I went through all of them and said, okay, if they asked me this one, this is what I'm gonna say, are you truly being heartfelt or is it just a practice, you know, a rehearsed act, I guess is what I'm saying. So that's, that's why I asked that. Mike, do you have a comment on that? I do. Good morning. Um, I, Rhonda, I really appreciate the question. I uh, completely understand what you're, you're saying on that front. I think the um, just to speak to you know, a little bit of the rationale there is that because this is a public meeting, um, we wanted to make sure it was a level playing field for the first person versus the other ones. So there are again important kind of you know legal standards and frankly, you know, an argument for performance standards of asking similar questions to similar people. Again, you know, you maybe ask each question. Some you know, naturally in the course of um, interviews and any conversation, there may very well be a follow-up question you ask the one person that makes sense. That's okay. Um, but by having a baseline where you've asked, and again, you don't have to ask all these questions, but I think the main point of feedback, um, you know, if, if, that I'd offer to you in terms of what Sally has been, you know, presenting on is the value of offering, you know, consistent questions to each person. So if you want to change some of them, by all means, you're completely in control on this. If you want to eliminate some of those questions or add new ones, same thing, you're completely in control. But if you add one, ask one person a question, and you want to make sure you're having equal opportunity, equal standards, and truly allow yourself to have an apples to apples comparison. Um, the, this is just one of those things about being a public body and having this interview in public that the first person would not know what the questions were. But if you're the second person or certainly the fifth or sixth, I just have to assume that if you're at all, you know, a sound professional, you'd be watching, they're watching this hearing undoubtedly right now, or they should be. If they're not, shame on them. They're obviously not doing their homework um, to, to understand what you guys are talking about and thinking about. So that's where the question of level playing field comes into play. Um, and so that, that was a bit of the rationale there. But I think your question is absolutely correct. I would never do it in any other setting because I'd want to just, you know, see how people, you know, respond and react. Hopefully that's helpful. Juanita. Can't hear you. Can't hear you. Um, there we go. We as a commissioner, can you hear me now? Steve? I can hear you now. Okay, great. I was wondering, as we as the commissioners, um, is there any certain one or two things that we should be looking for out of these uh, candidates that are anything that we should be looking for that we want particularly uh, more so than anything else? I, I personally thought the questions were uh, covered a broad range. I didn't have any burning question in my mind that wasn't already asked. I, and I, I personally don't have uh, one, uh, one lodestar question that's gonna, if, it, if it's answered right, that's the winner. Steve, yeah. I, I, think, I think one of the things that is important as we interview these people is to see how they handle themselves and see how they communicate. I, I think that's going to be one of the key things uh, uh, relative, you know, aside from all the questions that get asked. You know, one of the things that happens in interviews and I've done interviews as probably everybody else here has, uh, you know, you, you do the best you can trying to discern who's going to be the proper fit and ultimately it comes down to you make your best guess and hope it works out. Yeah. Rhonda. Okay, and like to responses, online replies and things we got, is it possible, can we ask them their party affiliation and if they made contributions to any party? If we truly want it to be a fair playing field since that's already been an issue with some of our responses we've received. Um, I think it's only fair that we ask every candidate the same question. Any Mike, thoughts? you can. Yeah, definitely. I mean, everything about you know this commission. I mean, that um, 
makes that, I think, fair game for all the reasons that are laid out in the Constitution for you all. For you to ask that question is a natural extension of it. I would agree, Rhonda. And I actually, I was going to suggest modifying a question. I don't know if we're there yet, but um, yeah, I, I do have a way to hopefully have a suggestion. I guess, I guess my, my thought is if we ask them if they uh, have a party affiliation, uh, unless they're uh, registered, uh, do they have to tell us? I mean, isn't that part of uh, uh, free speech, free association? They're not required to do that. Go ahead, Mike. So um, they absolutely have free association rights, and not, none of your questions prohibit that. In the same way that you know, there are some of you maybe registered Republicans or registered Democrats on this commission. Um, that wasn't a requirement for you. You just simply had to affiliate. The question is how you affiliate on your application. Um, and so, in the same regard, you know, you could ask them whether they register, or frankly, like whether they affiliate. Um, they can decline to answer that question. Um, and, you know, just like when someone takes the fifth, doesn't mean that they, again, I don't mean to equate these things, but just to say, you're allowed to ask the question, they're allowed to not answer the question. And then you can decide collectively whether you care that they decline to answer the question. I'll note that um, it is absolutely public record who someone gives money to. So it's not, you don't, um, you know, there's no way to know how somebody votes. And there's no way to know how somebody has voted over the course of their history, you know, not any election at all. Um, what is known and what is public record, whether is which ballot in a primary somebody took, because in Michigan, you don't have to be registered in either party to ask for the um, to you know, vote in either primary. So that's how parties, just as an FYI, that's how parties kind of figure out, they say, oh, well, this person, you know, asked for this ballot, this, you know, either the Republican ballot or the Democratic ballot in a primary. And so that, you know, they kind of connect the dots that probably most people are going to ask for the party that they affiliate when it comes to the primary. So that is public record. Somebody could figure that out for you. I'm not saying you need to do that, but just to say, if you ask somebody and they say one thing, no. someone could counter with it. The other piece is if they've given money, there are reporting requirements by candidates who receive money um, and other political action committees, both under state and federal law, where, you know, while you're at the meeting, you could actually pull that up and just do a search and see who is this person giving money to. All of that's public record. Um, so again, that doesn't perfectly equate to it, but just to say somebody out there is watching this um, and somebody is interested in just kind of making sure that people are just generally speaking kind of watchdog folks and otherwise. Um, so I think there is, there's that. Um, shifting gears and kind of last comment uh, is one question I'd put to you is whether you think there are too many questions. I think it covers broad ground. I'm mindful of the fact that I think you have six interviews. And so with six interviews, I think you're down to 30 minutes. And that's tight, frankly, um, you know, and so that's only the, the path that, um, you know, is now set. But along those lines, if people offer, you know, anything but like really basic cursory answers, um, you know, are you going to have enough time? So I, I, the question I put back to you all is what are perhaps key questions that you absolutely want to cover? And then thinking how many, what's a reasonable amount of time where you could really get a meaningful answer to help you figure out which of these six people you want to, you know, you want to bring on. Um, and so maybe you cut the, the number of questions down so you can actually have, you know, that have time for a back and forth, have time for a follow-up and all of that. And I think that's what I heard Juanita suggesting is maybe three questions. Did I understand that correctly, Juanita, that you were suggesting three? I would set three, yes. Yeah. yeah. Sally, what time are we set to end? What, what's our cutoff time? So you're set to end at 1.30. Uh, if you run a little over, that's all right. Hard stop at 2. Um, but I would also say we've scheduled, I mean, this is not, you know, the most determinative thing, but just for your awareness, we did schedule interviews every half an hour starting at 10. So it's all right if you get a little bit of a late start, um, but that's how it was scheduled. Okay. Just wanted, I thought that's what it was, but I just want to make sure. I remembered as well as everybody else. Doug. Yeah, I, I have a question. Um, who's going to take the lead on the interviews? And, and how are we going to do this uh, specifically? I mean, well, I think, I think, they, that the, uh, I think I mean, they've got me scheduled to introduce uh, people. OK. Uh, welcome them in and introduce uh, all of you people. Uh, and then um, my thought process, if we're going to cut down 
it, whatever we're going to do, we have 13 questions. So the easy way we, we would assign a question to one question to everybody. If we're going to make changes, then we need to work on that for the next 10 minutes. Yeah. I mean, are we going to have the, the committee chair involved or is he just going to be one of the 13 people that, that we are asking questions? I'd be happy simply to be the, uh, the coordinator. Um, okay. That's fine. I, That's I have, I mean, you guys can certainly ask questions the same way I would. So it doesn't make okay. any difference. Now, are we we're not limited to these 13 that are on this piece of paper, are we? Pardon? We're not limited to these 13 questions on this piece of paper. No, we I can. Wouldn't think so. We can make changes. We can add, delete, whatever. See, I've got the questions I put together for each person was really specific to their experience. And that's not the same question you could ask every one of the people. So is it? I don't know a good way to handle it. Whether we're going to get involved in those specifics or not. Well, you can uh, you can do uh, if there's a question of these thir just using these thirteen doesn't mean we're stuck with these thirteen, but you oh. certainly have the ability to do follow up based upon what you feel would be appropriate to ask in regards to their experience. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, I think we figure out what questions that we're going to ask if we are going to limit the questions from the list. And then we make sure, because Doug, I, I'm on the same page, that questions are asked specific to um, folks' background and some of the uh, other like supplemental information that was provided to us. I think Rhonda had a question. I was just going to make a suggestion, and maybe people wouldn't like it. Um, since we have three different party affiliations, basically, why don't we pick one person from each party to do the questions? I'm fine sitting out and listening to the answers so I can see reactions. But I think that way it might move it quicker rather than saying, okay, you go, you go, you go, if we narrow it down to just a few people asking questions. Just a suggestion. Yeah, I like that suggestion. And maybe we can use the committee members to do that because we have one from each party on the committee. And, and they're probably more familiar than anything with the, these people. Cynthia? Yeah, I, I agree that it'll go a little faster if we just have the three people do it. Um, I also think that this is too many questions. I think somehow we need to pare it down a little bit. Yeah, you have 13 questions, you got two minutes of questions. Yeah. Yeah. On the, on the having the committee members uh, is everybody kind of on a consensus we do that if Rhonda you're shaking your head no yeah in all honesty I would be um, comfortable just sitting back at this point because I really want to concentrate on what they're saying and I don't want to be like okay um, so I was actually I know when we first did this committee Doug talked about all of the experience he had um, throughout the 40 years with interviews and stuff. So I'd be very comfortable with Doug asking the questions, at least for us, if he's comfortable. Well, I guess if you'd like. Go ahead. I'll do that if you'd like. You're, you're talking about asking one third of the questions, aren't you, Rhonda? Correct, correct. Yeah. If, if, if the committee decides to do it that way with one person from each political affiliation asking the questions, then I personally would be comfortable with Doug doing that because even though I have some experience, he's got way more than me. So I wouldn't mind just sitting back and listening to the responses and watching reactions. Yeah, that's the key anyways, the responses. So I, I'd be happy to do that. Yeah. Rebecca. Yeah, so Anthony, um, aren't you also on the committee and aren't you an independent? You can just nod if that's a yes. Okay, so then do you wanna do the, the questioning for the independents? Yeah, I can do whatever, you know, whatever we decide to do, I'm all right with. Um, if anyone else wants to do it from who's independent, uh, I'm okay with that too. I, I was originally planning on doing the same thing Rhonda was just talking about, kind of trying to gauge uh, their responses. But if no one else wants to do it, then I can definitely take that up. So that would mean we have Doug and Anthony and who else asking questions? Who is the other committee member? Dustin. Uh, Dustin. Okay, you're you're good with that, Dustin. Yeah, I was I was going to be taking a whole bunch of notes, 
I guess I have my computer all set up for it right now to write down basically everything as best as I can. Uh, if, you miss, I can if you miss something, you can go back and review it on the uh, site website. Oh, yeah, I guess that's true. So, so yeah, I, could, I have no problem asking a couple questions. That's not it's everybody, if everybody's good with that, nod your head. Okay, consensus says we're good with that. We have our questioners. Now, do we, hurrying us along a little bit because we're running out of time if we want to have enough time. Uh, are there questions we want to delete? Rebecca. Um, I wouldn't say questions I want to delete, but I think one in 12 are two that are particularly important, which is, why do you want to be on the, why do you want to be the executive director? And then how do you anticipate working with the commission? So those are the two that I think are out of that list of 13, the most important. I agree. Um, I eliminated or thought of eliminating question three. I think there are other ways that we can get that answer. Give me an example of a team decision you were involved in recently. What was your role? What was the result? We have a lot of questions on there that deal with leadership style, strategic planning, um, work situation. So I don't really think in <clears throat> my view that that's particularly necessary. Rhonda looks like she has a question. Not really a question, just technical difficulties. My other laptop just went down that had the questions on it. So I'm not <laughs> able to see them at the moment. Um, is there a way that they could get popped up real quick just so I can review? I had them up here and it just totally crashed. We'll work on that. Give us a second. Yep. There it okay. is. There you go. All right. Uh, who's got there? Uh, Cynthia. Can't hear you, Cynthia. There you go. I'm able to unmute. Sorry. Um, so speaking of these questions, I do like Rhonda's suggestion of asking them which party they affiliate with and if they've contributed to a party. Um, so we need to put that in there somewhere if everyone agrees. And there's, I don't really see a question here. Um, I want to know how they would, like our big question, I think, is how would they handle being nonpartisan for us? They're representing us and we're nonpartisan. You know, we well, need to. So. Third of us are. Well, right, but as a whole, we need to be unbiased, and I, I would like to, I don't know the question, but I want to ask them, how do they plan to act in that way? I wonder if you could play around with the, their intro, if you're asking them to introduce themselves, and there's something that could be included in that little snippet of the importance of, of um, being nonpartisan. MC, sorry. I have a suggestion. I, I, I'm uh, so I would if you put up question number four, um, I would suggest that we add this one as the third question, being one and twelve, and then number four here, and yeah. modify it where it says because I, I think I think we're going to need more than just us, and I think our executive director, right, we're going to leverage as many relationships as we can to sort of reach as many people as possible to reach the citizenry of Michigan, and this idea of building partnerships really speaks to me. And and so um, what I'm suggesting is that we add. Can you tell about a t tell us about a time when you had a to facilitate a decision or consensus between multiple different people, organizations, or parties. This, I wanna get at party affiliation. And what I wanna suggest here is I think it's important not just to say what's your party affiliation, but can you actually rise above your party affiliation? And can you demonstrate that you've risen above it? Because I think we, we're in a tough situation where we actually need politically savvy people, right? Not who are gonna use their that and, and leverage it to an extreme outrageous advantage and create injustice, but we do need state and political experience. And so I think what I wanna suggest is it's, I think it's more than just asking their party affiliation. I think it's trying to say, yeah, this modifying question four would help me, I think help answer that and potentially give us a third question that might give us information that we need. Juanita. Um. According to MC's question, I um, was looking at the uh, candidate um, uh, uh, paperwork and I read it pretty thoroughly. And it really, if you look at it real good of the, the things they have achieved and the things that they've done, you will see that you that would almost answer the questions and we could go over it. 
And uh, but I found a couple of people in here that had a wide variety of interacting with the Democrats, the nonpartisans, and uh, the Republicans. And if you you really read it real good, you would know which ones they are, and uh, then you can kind of add on and, and tell them to elaborate a little bit about it. But I kind of already got a couple of people here that that met that category that you were talking about, Emily. Well, we certainly have the opportunity after the interviews uh, before making any type of decision to review what you're talking about, Juanita, to, into our uh, decision-making process. Okay. Anybody else? So far we have, we definitely want one in 12. There's a suggestion to cut three suggestion to add party affiliation slash donations and add to number four uh, something along the lines of uh, mediating party disputes. So that's my words, not exactly what uh, MC said. Are there specific ones we want to eliminate besides the suggestion of number three? Mm. Cynthia. Just in the interest of paring it way down, um, I think probably number two could be eliminated because they've probably mm -hmm. addressed that in their letters to us and the other information. And the other questions talk kind of lend towards that. I would agree. Rhonda has a question or a comment. <laughs> I was going to say number seven, if we could go to that one. That's kind of... Um, your style of management, that was one of the prereq questions when they did their resumes. People asked about how they consider their style of management, how they would explain their style to be. So I think that one is a little redundant and we could probably get rid of that one. Yeah, they'll probably talk about that in their other answers too. Yep. Yeah. Who's next? So are we gonna eliminate number seven? Well, we're talking about it. I'm already crossing them off. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll, we'll, get a, we'll get a final total here. For you. Uh, Rebecca. Rebecca, yeah. yeah. I, I was just going to say, let's just focus on 1, 4, and 12, because I feel like those, have, those are kind of the key ones. And the others were covered in their initial responses. If you go back and read them, you know, they talk about their contributions or it's in their resume about how they work with people. So I feel like it's kind of like those core questions plus the adding on the who have you contributed to? I wouldn't ask party affiliation because I feel like that's kind of nebulous and, and squishy, but contributions are a matter of public record and you should be able to say quite clearly who you've contributed to and that kind of tells us what we need to know right there. So that, that would be my suggestion is do one, four and 12, four with the modifications, ask the question about who have they contributed donations to politically. And I think that should give us kind of a good feel for for the individuals. Rhonda. In response to Rebecca's, uh, the reason I said party affiliation is because it's already obviously become an issue um, as far as the responses we've gotten. Um, so I just thought it'd make it a fair playing ground for everybody. Yeah. If, no, we, if they came out and said that, that way it makes it fair for everybody. And people will know, you know, we're not picking this person because of party or anything. Everybody disclosed. And that's that's what my thought process was for that. Hey, let me let me ask it this way. We've suggested cutting three, two, and two, three, and seven. Is everybody in agreement with cutting those? Nod your head, yes, no. Yeah. Okay, so those are out. Uh are there others we want to cut? Uh, Rebecca has suggested we only have three in there. I understand that, but are there specific ones that we want to cut? Anybody? All right. So uh, we're go ahead. Whoever said something. Yeah, that was me. Maybe five, just because I think that'll come up. But I'm I'm indifferent to what five is. Give me an example of a work situation that required excellent communication skills. How did you approach 
that experience or moment and what was the result. <clears throat> and um, in my eyes and experience with interviewing, that's kind of a fluff question that someone could answer. It's, I can give you the right answer to that. I'm more interested in the questions that are gonna speak about character. Um, this question of number nine, how are you actually gonna approach strategic planning? Cause that's gonna be important for us as a commission. So I think five is, is like a freebie. That's a... <laughs> All of, all of those five, we're cutting five. Nod your head appropriately. Okay, five's out. And uh, nine is in, I heard you say. Uh, yeah, we are interested in how you engage in strategic planning. What processes have you found useful? Because that tells me about your experience. And if you thought about what we're doing, where we're moving, do you have new ideas? Do you have questionable ideas? Um, those I think you can get a squeeze a lot out of number nine. I agree, Brittany. I concur. Hey, that would give us that would give us uh, four four questions for thirty minutes. And I think that would also give Doug an opportunity to add those kind of pop up questions mm -hmm. um, that he's thought about that are specific to individuals. I don't. That's just. Oh, I'm sorry, Chris. I'm, yeah. I'm actually in, I'm a commissioner. Who's gonna? I'm sorry, I can't take. Okay. So uh, are we set then? We're going to do one, four as amended, nine and 12. And there, Rhonda. Are we doing the added on one too about parties? Uh, four that as amended. Fine. Four okay. as amended. Okay. That talks about party affiliation and donations uh, and okay. referral. Refer I put down referee party disputes. Mm -hmm. Cynthia. Could somebody type this up for us real quick so that it, we have the same, where everyone's on the same. I have to ask Sally. Yeah, so commissioners, can I just read through the notes that I've been taking and then I'll um, send them uh, around to our staff who can um, change them because I was taking notes as I went some of the numbers changed as I was, uh, you mm -hmm. know, deleting. So I want to make sure I have it exactly as you've been talking about. So number one, why are you interested in this position? Then uh, a question about building partnerships, adding on and political parties to the end of the sentence. Um, and then we are interested in how you engage in strategic planning. And then uh, how do you envision all the way at the end, how do you envision the relationship between the executive director and the commissioners, blah, blah, blah. And then you would ask, do you have any questions for us? Did I miss any there? Hold on. We did number four. Can you tell us about a time when you had to facilitate a discussion or consensus between multiple different people and or organizations she, she had that one. Okay. And political parties, right? And was the add-on party. that you all wanted to put there? Where, where, then, where, sorry, where, go ahead. Where are you putting the party affiliation slash donation? So I was just going to ask, I'm assuming you'd want that as its own separate question. Um, so, you know, what is your par political party affiliation and, you know, your past political contributions? Okay. Do you want that one towards the top, everybody? Or do you want that? more towards the end i would suggest the end you got it okay uh of the three people who are asking questions who's taking which questions i'll take one i'll take four I can ask about the political party affiliations and uh, contributions. Keep going. <laughs> Keep volunteering. Be number nine. And I'll do 12 as well. Okay. That got them all. Were we asking six or no? The other ones are kind of like supplemental questions. Six was not on the list of ask. 
Oh, okay. Nothing. Dustin, were you asking, are we asking six total questions or question, question number six? Oh, question number six, okay. Uh, could, could you review, Steve, what, who's asking which question? I didn't get them written down. So what are you doing, Doug? I, I had a technical problem. I, I said yes to four, but I think some, somebody else may have done that as well. Uh, I'm not seeing any head shaking yet, so you got An it. Done. Yeah, Anthony okay. said that he was going to ask about party affiliation. Um, I don't think okay. he said number four, though. Yeah. That is number four, though, isn't it? I think it was coming in as a separate question. Yeah. Oh, okay. So as a separate question. Okay. So I'll do number four then. Okay. Okay. So we got the party affiliation. We have uh, Dustin. What are you taking? Uh, I was going to take the first one. Number one, four, party affiliation, 12. Who's taking 12? Anthony. Anthony. And uh, 13 is, do you have any questions? I can ask 13 unless there's an objection. Did we, did we get nine? No. Not yet. Nine. Anyone want to do nine? Dustin, how about you do nine? So I got one and nine. Thank you for your service. Welcome. Does that cover them all? We got one, yeah. 12, four, nine, and I got 13. And we're waiting for Sally and the questions. Anybody have any comments or questions while we're uh, waiting? So uh, I take it we're asking the questions in order all the time. So one, four, nine, 12, and 13. And I have one and nine. Yes. And we have- Anthony had a question, I think. Anthony, question? So we have, we're down to, we narrowed this down to five questions. That's great. Good job, everyone. Um, <laughs> the question earlier, if um, I believe Doug is going to ask after the five questions, uh, specifics, follow-ups for the candidate, are we doing that or are we sticking with just these five? Well, you can have follow-up after the, as they answer the question, if any of us have a follow up inquiry, we should ask it. Don't launch off into a five minute question. Uh, so commissioners, I just sent an updated file to all of you and also to our team. Um, so once our team gets it, um, we can quick screen share if it'd be helpful. They're all renumbered now because I deleted the ones that we didn't want. Uh, screen share just to make sure you're all on the same page uh, and then you can get started. Well, let's see if everybody got it. We can't download this, right? I, I downloaded it fine. Yeah, but Anthony, you're the only one that can do it. Oh. Only thing I can do is save it to a OneDrive. Well, I did figure out that I can email it to myself and then I can do whatever I want with it. Well, my question is easy. All I got to ask is if they have any questions. So I can remember that, I think. Thank you. 
Now I'm just waiting for it to come into my email. It's taking forever. So commissioners, uh, the questions are on screen right now, but once uh, you start the interviews, we'll take them off, um, especially for the viewers. So our first, uh, or rather your first candidate is here um, and ready to go whenever you are. So just let us know and we can, um, we can kind of go to the, uh, to the technical aspect of promoting them and, and getting them into the meeting. Okay, is everybody ready to go? Specifically the people asking the questions? I'm trying to see. Okay, yeah, I'm ready. I think so. <sighs> okay, who's... Who's up first? Brandon Bryce, I believe. Oh, oh yeah, but Dustin's asking the first question. And then Doug. Correct. And then Dustin again. And then Anthony. Anthony, you're doing the party affiliation and number 12. You want to do those at the same time, please? Yeah, I'll just do those concurrently. Well, I got on the on the interview question that just got mailed out, I've got that as part of the closing on number four. What's your party affiliation and past history of political contributions? Okay. Um, Anthony, you good with that having him ask? Yes, I'm to... gonna, uh, on this document, I'm gonna ask number four and number five. What was that? Anthony? On this sheet, the questions that I'm responsible for are four and five. I, I thought I was responsible for four. The numbers changed when Sally yeah. mailed it out. So your question so, would now be number two, Doug. Yeah. So let, let's let's. Um, okay, I got it. Okay. Go. Give me the numbers. Give me the numbers on the new sheet. I'm not looking at it. Okay, so Dustin has one, right? Yes. Uh, Doug has two. Okay. Correct. Dustin has three, and then I have four and five. Yeah. Okay. And then Steve has okay. six. Okay. 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 All right. And we. We have uh, Mr. Bryce up to start with. Mm -hmm. He's here. <laughs> How's everyone? Welcome, Mr. Bryce. Glad to see you. Thank you for having me. Um, we have uh, in, I'm assuming you can see everybody. I can. That's unfortunate for you because some of us aren't like myself, aren't very good looking. Um, okay, the, um, I would ask uh, that we very briefly just introduce ourselves, uh, starting in the upper left with Rhonda, and we'll go right around and everybody will tell you who they are. Good morning, Mr. Bryce. My name is Rhonda Lang from Reed City, Michigan, up north, and it's a pleasure to meet you. Good morning. Hey, uh, I'm Steve Lett. I am the uh, chairperson of this wonderful commission, and I uh, hail from Interlochen, which is up by Traverse City. Yep. Good morning. Hello, Mr. Bryce. Thanks for being with us today. I'm Anthony Ede um, from Orchard Lake, and good luck. 
Thank you. Steve, you might have to say the order because I think on your screen it's totally different. I guess. It is. Janice. <laughs> right. I'll go Hi. Mike order. Janice. Hi, I'm Janice Spillett. Um, welcome. Good luck. Thank you. Cynthia. Cynthia Orton. I live in Battle Creek, Michigan, and it's nice to have you. Thank you. Brittany. I am Brittany Kellum. I'm from Detroit, Michigan. I am the vice chair of this commission and welcome, welcome. Thank you. Rebecca. Hi, good morning. Rebecca Zatella from Canton, Michigan. Welcome and good luck. Thank you. Juanita. Hi, Ms. Bryce. I'm Juanita Curry from Detroit, Michigan, and we welcome you. Thank you. Dustin. Good morning, Mr. Bryce. My name is Dustin. I am from Ypsilanti, Michigan, and I look forward to uh, interviewing you today. Thank you. Aaron. Good morning, Mr. Bryce. My name is Aaron Wagner. I'm from Shaw, Michigan. Thank you for applying, and we look forward to your answers. Thank you. MC. Good morning. I'm MC. Just call me MC. And um, yeah, I'm in Lansing, Michigan, and good to have you. Thank you. Doug. I'm Doug Clark. I'm from uh, Rochester Hills, Michigan, and it's uh, great to have you with us this morning. Thank you. Richard. Good morning, Mr. Bryce. Nice to meet you. I'm from Saginaw, Michigan, and uh, good luck on your interview. Thank you. All right, they, um, I don't think I missed anybody, but the scramble on this uh, kind of confusing sometimes. Uh, but uh, the, the way that we're going to do this so that you know is uh, we will have uh, four members uh, of our commission asking you questions. Okay. And we will uh, allow, we're gonna hold it to about a half an hour and we are, uh, we'll have uh, follow-up questions after, after you answer a question, there may be a follow-up to that answer. We'll just see how that goes. Um, other than that, do you have any questions at this time about the process? No. Okay. All right. The first uh, person that will be asking questions uh, will be uh, Dustin. Go ahead, Dustin. Thank you, Steve. Okay, uh, Mr. Bryce, uh, why are you interested in this position and the work of redistricting in Michigan more broadly? So I grew up in Michigan, and what's important to me is voter integrity. Also, what's important to me is that uh, I believe from the redistricting perspective, there should be no safe districts. Uh, every elected official should have to fight for their district. I believe in putting the power back into the hands of the people not into the hands of uh, political establishments. And so I take this, uh, this commission very serious uh, in that it, it makes sure that our democracy stays uh, afloat and it gives uh, Michiganders the power, not Lansing or Washington. Anybody have a, a follow-up uh, inquiry as to that? All right, next will be uh, Doug Clark. Doug? Yes, uh, Brandon, um, can you tell us about a time when you had to facilitate a decision or consensus between multiple different people, organizations, and political parties? Well, that's been the story of my life. Uh, my, there's been two issues that I've been, well, three issues that I've been very uh, strong on in terms of galvanizing uh, both uh, support from Democrats and Republicans. Uh, one, I deal a lot with youth services. Uh, that's what I do. I'm a nonprofit executive. And so my job is to do much more with less. Uh, so being a good steward uh, is extremely important. The other part is when it comes to issues like education reform, uh, when it comes to issues like dealing with veteran services, these are two issues that doesn't matter if you're a Democrat or Republican, they're important and they should be important to you. And so I've been able to galvanize resources, work with both sides uh, and create a win-win opportunity to hear the needs. And so I always say, uh, my favorite quote is, uh, it takes courage to, uh, to be active, but it also takes courage sometimes to sit and listen, hear what the other side is saying and get their, get their understanding. Uh, and I have experienced more than 14 years of experience uh, in working with both groups 
uh, and working to galvanize solutions to solve everyday uh, American issues. Can you give me a, uh, an example uh, in, in your work life of, uh, of uh, this type of thing? Sure. So uh, I worked years ago with the New Jersey legislature on education reform. Uh, as you can imagine, that was a very controversial issue. But what we were able to do is work with not only uh, Democrats and Republicans, but also galvanize outside groups, uh, those groups like vendors, those groups like the business community to help them understand that education reform was more than just whether a kid gets a quality education, but it's about the future of your workforce. So they saw it as an investment, not necessarily just as an issue. And then also we worked with the, uh, those Democrats that were in support of uh, ed reform, uh, the defer groups, which said that certain issues like education, certain issues like uh, redistricting, certain issues like veteran services, they shouldn't be partisan issues because they affect everyone. So I, my understanding is that as you work with Governor Christie, that was on the Republican side, and but you did uh, facilitate work with the Democratic uh, Party within New Jersey as well. We had to. It, everyone was a Democrat except for the governor. Uh, they controlled both houses. And so my job uh, was to be the face, but it was also to sell the narrative. And the narrative was, it doesn't matter on your zip code, every young person deserves a quality education. Uh, doesn't matter if you're Democrat or Republican. And, and, and as a result, we got three bills passed. Uh, so apparently we did something right. And who specifically on the uh, Democratic side did you work with? Uh, well, we worked with the Speaker's office at that time. We also worked with, uh, at that time, uh, the Senate president. Uh, I, I don't recall the, the, the name at the time, uh, but we worked with those two factions. And then we also worked with uh, the New Jersey Department of Education at that time. Okay. That's all the questions I have, Brandon. Steve, back to you. Any uh, follow-up from anybody? All right. Uh, Dustin. Okay. Uh, we are interested in how you engage in strategic planning. What processes have you found useful and where would you start with the work of the commission? So the first thing, uh, when it comes, and I do strategic planning both in uh, the nonprofits uh, that I serve. Uh, I serve as board chair for two. Uh, but strategic planning is always important because we need to know where, we, where we've been, where we are, and where we're going. Uh, the other part of that is working with the commission, uh, but also looking at some of the legal uh, ramifications. So this role, we talk about redistricting. Uh, there's a lot of legal issues that uh, one would have to deal with when we talk about fair maps. Uh, when we talk about looking at uh, fair districts, we talk about looking over time of why districts were drawn, uh, the certain ways that they were drawn. And so my, my, my role would be a lot of research, uh, but also looking at uh, working with the commission, working with you guys uh, to make sure that the direction is set uh, and that my role is to execute that direction. The other part is looking at outside vendors to set, look at how do we look at past uh, people who have either worked on those maps and why were some of the decisions made for those maps and how do we get it relevant to move forward um, move forward today and, 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 and for the next uh, two years. Uh, Brandon, if you were to become the executive director, would you view your position as uh, being uh, one of uh, I am the I am the director, and you as the commission serve me, or uh, we are the commission, and you as the director serve us. So I serve as board president of uh, two boards right now, one in Lansing, one in Detroit, a healthcare board. And I can tell you, uh, as the governance role and accountability, our job is not to run the organization. That's the role of the CEO. So as it relates to this, the commission. I look at you guys as giving the direction. My job is to execute that. And so my job is also to have a, a, a honest, uh, upfront and transparent relationship with each and every one of you uh, so that we can do the will and serve at the end of the day, Michiganders. Uh, this is not personal for me. Uh, this is important for me. This is a mission for me to make sure people have fair elections. And so uh, my job is to be your uh, executor, but also your advocate and also uh, your partner. Executor, are we are we out to get somebody's head? 
How, how about facilitator? Facilitator. I'm not even going to comment on that. Facilitator. Any follow-up from anybody? All right. Uh, we're up to Anthony. Okay. Mr. Bryce, um, I have two questions for you. The first being, um, do you have a political party affiliation? And have you... And what is your past history of political contributions? So, uh, I mean, you can find it on any any social media. So, uh, my political affiliation is I am a Republican, uh, but I don't always agree with everything that my party does. Unfortunately, as as I should, uh, it's the American way. Uh, my role is to make sure Michiganders are getting uh, the best when it comes to service. Uh, I do not give the political contribution. Uh, for the reason that I work with both sides. I live in Detroit and I'm a true Detroiter. Uh, and so my role has always been crossing the aisle, working across the aisle. Uh, ask any Democrat that, 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 that I'm that I have good rapport with. Uh, my job is very solutions driven. I've always been a very independent thinker. Uh, and so with me, um, as I said before, uh, my role has always been about transparency. It's always been about integrity. Uh, I'm a former Boy Scout. And then my job is also making sure that regardless of my political party, you know, as my dad, who's a minister, would say, it's not about who's right, it's about what's right. Is there any follow up to that question from anyone? Uh, this, Doug, um, could, could you uh, give us an idea relative to contributions that you've made in the past, your, your contribution history to political parties? I have. I typically don't make political contributions because I work with both sides. Uh, I'm in nonprofit, so we can't afford to be partisan. <laughs> okay. Uh, my, go ahead, Anthony. My next question is, and you kind of alluded to this earlier, um, but how do you envision the relationship between the executive director and the commissioners? How would you approach communication and your working relationship with the commissioners on an individual level and on a group level? Well, I think it's very important uh, that, you know, there, and I'll go back to my comment before, uh, my role is to be your partner and your advocate and your facilitator. Uh, but with that, I also think relationships matter. And so I think with me, uh, you know, anytime I know or have information, uh, it's my job to share that information with you, the commission. And so once again, I believe in transparency and integrity. Uh, but the other part of that is that I think uh, it's important for you guys for there to be synergy of, uh, you know, if there's information that I receive or if there's information uh, that could potentially be a conflict of interest. Uh, I think we, we, we walk down a tricky road when, that, when, I hide, when people hide that information, especially when their role is to be a facilitator for something as important as the redistricting commission. So once again, you know, my, my office, uh, will be one of transparency. It'll be one of integrity, even with the among, even with uh, with and among my staff. Uh, and I believe in the I believe in that so that we can have credible uh, mapping, incredible elections moving forward. Um, Brandon, you you understand, I'm sure that uh, this process as. Uh, envisioned by the amendment and as required by the amendment uh, may be the most open, transparent process in the state of Michigan. Does that cause you any concern? Not at all. I'm an open book. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a Christian. And so I believe in, uh, you know, I, in other words, I think trans, when you talk about government, what makes government works is integrity. And that's why, I'm, that's why I'm, I put my bid in for this role uh, because I think it's time for us to get real about uh, the future of elections. Uh, as you can see right now, what's kind of happening both on the national and local level, uh, I want to avoid that for the state of Michigan. Make sure that it's a fair, uh, balanced uh, map that represents all people who vote. Any other uh, follow-up for uh, Brandon? For any questions. Good. All right. Uh, I have the last one, and uh, this throws it back in uh, your ball, 
Park, uh, do you have any questions of us or anything you would like to say? This is this brings it to a conclusion. Well, I just want to say, uh, first of all, thank you for taking the time to interview me. Uh, one thing that I would add is that you know some of you may say, well, you know, should we put this? Should we make this guy the executive director of the commission? One thing I want you to understand is just to tell you a little bit about me. Uh, I'm somebody who believes in democracy. Uh, I'm somebody who has worked with both sides and in some cases is respected uh, on both sides because I always have been uh, integrity based. I've always uh, focused on transparency and I've always tried to be honest in all my dealings. And so when we talk about respect, uh, that is something that will be a part of my, 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 my administration, my team, uh, to make sure that uh, people are getting quality maps that are going to be fair and balanced. And so I, I leave that with you to say, uh, I am a Detroiter, uh, I am a Republican, uh, and I am an African-American man living in America. But at the end of the day, I want safer, more fair and balanced maps for you when you and your family vote. And so I ask, that, uh, I ask for your support on this, and I thank you for your time. All right, anybody have any uh, follow-up uh, after uh, Brandon's uh, closing remarks? Okay, if not, Brandon, uh, we thank you for coming. We thank you for your application. Um, we, I will not have an answer today. Uh, sure. We will deliberate and uh, we'll come up with something, but uh, you will hear from us one way or another in the future. So, uh, and it won't be a long wait, uh, so. Thank you again. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Okay, before we take the next person, are there any, um, any comments? Anything we could do better? I think it went well, quite frankly. So I guess I, I, I'm not looking well. for looking for problems, but if someone saw one, I would certainly uh, consider that. Um, I don't know how long that took. Was anybody timing it? Sally, were you timing that? It took about seven, eight minutes. Yeah, it took about 15 minutes. Um, it was a little, like around 15, between 15 and 20. Yeah, that's okay. I thought we got a good uh, feel for him. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Dr. Cheryl Mitchell is next by my count. Anthony. Um, I just wanted to, to see, uh, Aaron said she needed to step away for a minute. Is, is she? Bad. Okay. I have a nitpicky thing. I think it's nitpicky. So you all can roll your eyes if you want to. I think um, the interview can be more conversational where the people, the folks, if you know when your question is coming, just ask instead of having our <laughs> beloved chair direct you to ask the question. <laughs> just in the way of, you know, appearing independence and uh, having us have autonomy, that's it. And, and I wanna offer too that um, I, I don't think, I, this may be nitpicky again, um, but I, I, it might be more consistent if we agree on Mr. Bryce or Brandon. What I mean is if it's both, sometimes it can throw a person off. And I think I, I think what I'm hearing with Brittany's comment is if we can help the, the candidate be at ease, right? When we're consistent, um, it might help them just feel, yeah, like less like, whoa, what did that mean? Like, if you use my first name, what did that mean? <laughs> what I'm suggesting is it, it those little details can sometimes matter a big, make a big difference to a candidate who is already nervous. So I'm just- I, yeah. <clears throat> I would- uh agree with that and I would suggest that we stick with uh, Ms. Mr. We can't hear you, Dustin. I think Dustin, he said I stick with oh. Mr. Mr. Hello? Yeah, I was gonna I was gonna stick with, with Mr. and and Ms. for example and then with, with Dr. Mitchell definitely doctor because well she's earned it. So um that's my I'm take. And Dustin if you I think you your microphone is up 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 here on your headset and if you bring it down it might we might hear you better. Oh is that your microphone? Okay never mind. <laughs> so we're, we're, we're agreed on we're using last names in the uh, formal. I, yeah, I would, I, I would, I would prefer first name, but 
if that's what we want to do. As long as it's not people. very warm and fuzzy, people, but that's what you want. That's what I, we'll do. I'm I'm happy to yeah, okay. But yeah, we we've got to move along and you know, like somebody said, she earned it. We could also here's a here's a thought. How about we ask them? Well, no, that that's awkward. Never mind. Never mind. That's a bad idea. That's, no, <laughs> that is actually all a good idea. idea. Well, let's put it this way. Dr. Mitchell's here, so we'll cut this short. And uh, <laughs> Dr. Mitchell, welcome. We're glad to have you here. Uh, and we're going to use Dr. Mitchell. You can call us anything you want when you're, when you're talking to us. Uh, uh, we're going to go around and we're going to, I'm going to call on people to introduce themselves. Normally I would just say introduce yourselves, but our pictures flip around and so I can't tell who's who's where on their screen. So we'll start uh, with Rhonda who has not moved since the last time. I like my place. Good morning, Dr. Mitchell. We're very happy to have you here to interview with us today and I wish you the best of luck. My name is Rhonda Lang from Reed City, Michigan. Morning, Doctor. Uh, Steve Lett. Uh, I hail from uh, Interlochen up by Traverse City. I'm the chair of the commission. Uh, Janice. Hi, welcome, Dr. Mitchell. I'm Janice Follett, and I'm from Highland Township in Michigan. Cynthia. Hi, Dr. Mitchell. I'm Cynthia Orton. I live in Battle Creek, and we're excited to hear from you today. Anthony. Good morning, Dr. Mitchell. Thanks for being here with us today. Uh, I'm Anthony Ede, originally from Orchard Lake, Michigan, and good luck today. Brittany. Hi, Dr. Mitchell. I am Brittany Kellum coming to you from Detroit, Michigan, and I am the vice chair of the commission. Good morning. Rebecca. Good morning, Dr. Mitchell. My name is Rebecca Zatella. I am from Canton, Michigan, and welcome. Juanita. Good morning, Dr. Mitchell. Uh, my name is Juanita Curry. I'm from Detroit, Michigan, and I welcome you. Dustin. Good morning, Dr. Mitchell. My name is Dustin uh, Witches. I'm from Ypsilanti, Michigan, and I look forward to interviewing you today. Aaron. Good morning, Dr. Mitchell. My name is Aaron Wagner. I hail from Charlotte, Michigan. Welcome. We look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. MC. Morning, Dr. Mitchell. My name is MC. Please call me MC. I'm in Lansing, Michigan. Doug. Good morning, uh, Dr. Mitchell. I'm uh, Doug Clark. I'm uh, from Rochester Hills, Michigan, and it's good to have you with us this morning. Richard. Dr. Mitchell, nice to meet you. I'm from Saginaw, Michigan. Okay, that's uh, everybody, Dr. Mitchell. And uh, just to uh, fill you in on the process, we, we have uh, assigned uh, some questions that we want uh, all of the interviewees to answer. Uh, and there will be uh, four of us that will be asking uh, a series of questions. Uh, and you'll have plenty of time to answer. There will be uh, follow-up questions after each one if members of the commission have those. And at the end, we will give you an opportunity to add whatever you would like uh, and ask any questions you would like. So we're going to lead off with uh, Doug on the first question. Uh, wh why are you interested in this position and in the work of redistricting in Michigan more broadly? Well, good morning and thank you for the question. Um, it's really exciting to see the Citizens Initiative come into fruition in this historic body. And one of the reasons and relates to my background, I was um, a part of the 2010 census um, project for Oakland County when I was working with the Oakland County Board of Commissioners. And I was also a staff in support of their redistricting commission. And in seeing that process close up, and quite frankly, some of its shortcomings, I became involved with the League of Women Voters of Oakland area and educating residents about redistricting because um, they were a nonpartisan body and they recognized the importance of involving citizens in the process. And why I'm interested in this position is my passion is for ensuring citizens' voices are heard in government decision-making tables. 
Um, this led to my dissertation on priority-based budgeting, um, which focused on the impact of citizen engagement to identify community values and priorities for alignment with government spending. Uh, I'm comfortable um, working in a government environment, particularly in a nonpartisan and with bipartisan boards. I have um, firsthand experience in navigating the Open Meetings Act, and that includes the requirements under this new environment that allows for the remote meetings like we're having today. Mm -hmm. um, I have a keen understanding and commitment to openness and transparency in government. In fact, my efforts um, resulted in the Sunshine Award when I was the city manager in um, the city of Albion. So why am I interested? This is an awesome, amazing um, opportunity to be involved in a citizen-led initiative and making certain that as we move forward working together that the process is fair, is open, is transparent, and it, most importantly, it engages a cross-section of residents from across our state. Let, let's talk about the position uh, for a moment. How do you envision the executive director working with not only the commission, but uh, other individuals that are involved in, in this uh, endeavor? How do I envision um, the role of the executive director working with the commission is to um, serve you in your goals and objectives, um, to facilitate the processes, to help you with aligning your, um, your objectives with what are the resources needed to make certain that the communication happens both internally with each of you, as well as with the constituency and any organizations that you are, are needing to engage in. Uh, having worked in the um, in a political realm for quite some time as an independent and professional staff person, I understand that my personal viewpoints aren't the ones that are important is the viewpoints of you as a body and making certain that your initiatives are as streamlined and strategic as they can be so that we can move forward to a successful outcome let's get a little more specific about the position what do you see as some of the specific roles and responsibilities of the executive director some of the roles and responsibilities will be helping you with your strategic process, um, understanding what your next steps are going to be, um, identifying what are the resources and staffing needs to support those initiatives, making certain that you have qualified staff on here and a strong working relationship with the Michigan Department of State, as well as bringing on board those consultants who have the expertise that will be needed um, because this is very detailed work and um, but it's very important work. So you want to make certain that um, you are working effectively and efficiently, um, making certain that the best practices are understood and aligning them with your work, but also understanding that Michigan is unique. So not everything that happened in other communities may be a best fit for us here. Thank you, Dr. Mitchell. Steve, I'll turn it back to you. Thank you. Any uh, other questions from other members of the commission? Uh, based upon Dr. Mitchell's answer. Okay. Uh, Dustin, I'm, I'm not ignoring you. I was looking at a different uh, lineup, but you're up with uh, your question and I'll take your both of your questions. Okay. Um, so let's go. Can you tell us about a time when you had to facilitate a decision or consensus between multiple different people organizations or political parties? Uh, working for um, government, that's every day. Um, and an example might be uh, with, the, with Oakland County and working with the Board of Commissioners who are elected on a partisan basis. And it was with the creation of the um, Women's Advisory Commission. Um, probably more than anything, I'm an advocate for empowering women, especially in leadership roles and young people in underserved communities. Um, so looking at opportunities in o Oakland County to have a women's commission that would mirror the Michigan Women's Commission that was um, created by the state and I was um, appointed to serve on. But as part of that process, there were concerns about it becoming partisan and how do you elect um, 
or appoint individuals to serve on that so that it didn't have a, a political party bias. So what was initially thought to be a seven member commission, um, what was negotiated was at that time there were 25 county commissioners. So the conversation that resulted was that there were 25 appointees to the women's commission so that each commissioner was able to appoint the person they felt best represented their district. So that was one of those outcomes. Um, another situation would have been in Albion, which was in Calhoun County, and I served on the um, Health Alliance Board, and there they were looking at initiatives that were going to um, be helpful to the residents. But I, the community that I served, Albion, had a high um, percentage of minorities, and they also had um, a high level of poverty. So making certain that their needs were represented on that board was important and that was especially important because during that time that was when we had the the contamination of lead in the water situation in Flint and because Albion had a high number of um, homes that were older um, they had high lead um, concentration levels in the blood levels of students there so making certain that those conversations were inclusive of the needs of a community that otherwise might have been overlooked. And another situation would have been um, just working with the state legislature. And I've worked uh, very closely at that time with um, Representative um, Bison and Senator Knox, who were Republican, um, but our community was predominantly Democrat. So I had to represent the needs of the community and work with whoever is in the legislative legislative decision-making position because that's who you you serve is the community and you have to work with everyone yeah. on the outcome from that we were able to obtain um multi-million dollar um awards relative to supporting our infrastructure including upgrades to our water system are there any uh, follow-ups to uh, dustin's question and and uh, dr mitchell's answer Hey, Dustin, uh, your next question, please. Sorry about that. Um, we are interested in how you engage in strategic planning. What processes have you found useful and where would you start work with the commission? I've worked with um, strategic planning processes with a number of organizations, communities, nonprofit groups, um, currently, I'm working on the strategic planning of, and the capital improvement plan for the um, city of Lake Village, uh, which is multifaceted, and we're working with um, other entities relative to um, getting some of our infrastructure um, work accomplished. But my approach to it tends to be, um, I think you're, you're probably familiar with SWAT, you know, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. I prefer what what's called SOAR, which is strengths, opportunities, aspirations, and measurable results. So you're focusing on the positive, um, productive, and proactive approaches to um, your strategic planning processes. I, um, and in terms of this commission, I, I would focus on first the constitutional mandates that you have to address. What are the legal requirements? Um, what are the best practices? Um, we are not the first to look at redistricting, but um, we are one of the first to look at it from a citizen's initiative perspective. So what are the best practices and especially what are the best practices relative to citizen engagement? I would say that I have expertise in that area and finding innovative ways where um, not only is this a new approach, but we're in a new time. So in a COVID environment, how do you engage citizens when you can't sit face to face with them easily these days. So we'd have to be very creative in, in those approaches. And especially when you're using heavily technology like today's meeting, but what about those who do not have access to technology? How are you going to reach out to them and have them informed as well as getting input from them? And then focusing on the goals of this commission, what are you identifying as your goals? What are the timeframes and what we have to meet and what are those benchmarks to make certain that we're on track and always looking for the advice of experts in the field. Are 
Are there any uh, follow-up questions to uh, Dr. Mitchell's answer and uh, Dustin's question? Dr. Mitchell, you mentioned um, thoughts about getting engagement in kind of challenging circumstances. And there was one other point that you alluded to. I was wondering not to put you on the spot because um, these are very thorough answers, but could you give um, some thought on the, the specific ideas that you would have given what you know about the commission and what you've already watched? Well, some of my thoughts, and you're talking about the engagement element, uh, it's one, capitalizing on the organizations that one, I'm personally involved in, such as Michigan Municipal League um, and um, League of Women Voters, and organizations that care about citizen engagement and government and governance processes, as well as um, groups that represent underserved communities and helping them to become informed and engaging their populations to be a part of the process. So it's creating a network. So essentially creating a network that can branch out and it could be on a regional basis. It can be on economic basis. It can be on all types of different um, social economic terms other in addition to um, political um, perspectives because all voices need to be heard. Thank you, Dr. Mitchell. Any other follow-up? All right, we're up to Anthony. All right, Dr. Mitchell, I have two questions for you today. Okay. The first being, what is your uh, political party affiliation mm -hmm. and do you have a past history of political contributions? I do not currently have a political party affiliation. Um, to be perfectly honest and transparent, when I was with Oakland County, so I think that was in the 80s, early 80s, I lived in the township of West Bloomfield and I ran for Parks and Recreation Commission. And because it was a township, it was a partisan office. I didn't understand the partisan nature of parks and recreation, but nonetheless, that was the world in which I lived. Um, but I was very passionate about um, having a voice in my local community. So at that time, I did run um, with a, a label. I have a very strong dislike of labels. If anything, I would say that I'm, I'm independent. I vote on individuals. I um, I irritated some people because even though I was identified with one party at that point, I supported women who were serving on the um, the township board at that time, and they were of a different party. So I, I don't look at party as a discerning um, factor in terms of who I am and who I um, who I respect and will work with. I have to work with any, any anyone and everyone. But I would also say that was 20 years ago. And so one of the lessons learned at that time was although as an individual, I had the right to be involved in a um, party activity, it did spill over into my professional work. Um, it, so that was a lesson learned. And since that time, I have definitely um, not been involved in politics, not supporting political parties, not supporting individuals. Um, as much as I might like to for certain individuals, especially if they're friends of mine, but they have to understand that one, it, it's not appropriate because I have to work with everyone. And two, I'm a member of the ICMA, the International City Managers Association. So I abide by the code of ethics and it specifically states that we cannot support financially um, or otherwise individuals or parties. So I adhere to those standards. Okay, thank you for that answer. Um, is there any follow up to that question from any of the commissioners? Yes, uh, that was a, a wonderful explanation of your uh, current and past uh, affiliations, but I'm still curious as to what you ran as, Democrat or Republican? I ran as a Democrat. Thank you. In a predominantly Republican community, so it was really interesting. <laughs> well, well, <laughs> Anybody that's lived in Michigan knows who the big cheese in Oakland County was. I do uh, 
have a follow-up question. I didn't, uh, you said that currently you don't make any contributions to any party. Have you in the past? Yes, back in the early 80s, I did. And I, I would say I make contributions to both Democrats and Republicans. Any other uh, any other follow ups? Okay, Anthony, Dr. Mitchell, I'll tell you, I uh, I went to school in the West Bloomfield School District, so I know a little bit about the area. Um, my final question is: How do you envision the relationship between the executive director and the commissioners? With that, how would you approach communication and your working relationship with the commissioners, both individually and as a group? Well, the executive director is to support you and your initiatives. So in terms of the communication, um, what is key is that everyone gets the same information at the same time. Sometimes an individual may um, reach out with a question, but it is very important to provide that question and response to all of you. So the communications are totally open, totally transparent and clear and fair for everyone that's involved. You can't play favorites and, and just being supportive of your role and your objectives is um, how I see my job. And there may have been another part of that question and if you could repeat that. Um, yes, so can you speak a little bit about your approach um, as far as communicating with us individually versus as a group? Well, in terms of communicating with you individually, what I have found successful is actually on occasion, as much as time permits, having some one-on-one -on -one sessions with you just to um, find what are your concerns, what are your interests, um, is there anything else that I could be doing that could better support you in your role? Um, then bringing that back together in how we are addressing the needs of you as a full commission. Um, but again, being mindful not to play favorites, but to make certain that those lines of communications are open. Some people aren't as, um, as comfortable um, speaking in a, a group setting, especially one that's being televised and recorded. So just making certain that you have those opportunities to have access to me and to the staff so that you are supported in all of your objectives. Let me um, follow up with asking, um, if, if you are hired for this position, do you see yourself as working for the commissioners or do you see yourself as, um, I suppose, uh, being in charge of the commission? Definitely working for the commissioners, um, working for the citizens of the state of Michigan. Um, one of the um, interesting elements of government is that if you look at the, um, the organizational chart, it always starts with the citizens at the top and then the elected officials and then the staff. So I, I understand that and adhere to it. Um, one of the things that I think is important, however, is that if the citizens are who we all report to, to make certain that their voices are heard at the beginning of the process and not at the end of the process when all the decisions have been made. So that's why it is so exciting to see um, this commission in place and the work that you're about to engage in. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Mitchell, you understand that uh, pursuant to the amendment uh, that was passed in the constitutional mandate that this process is uh, open to the public in all its aspects and it's transparent and probably uh, working with uh, Zoom and uh, computers and technology, it, it is an extremely, extremely open and above board uh, process. Uh, we cannot make uh, any decisions uh, without them being in the open meetings. You've indicated you are uh, familiar with the open meetings and certainly as a city manager, you would be. Um, does that cause you any concern that uh, 
that doesn't leave us uh, with a lot of uh, wiggle room to have uh, uh, decision talks uh, out of the public eye. Everything is in the public eye in this case. Well, that's the realm in which I, I, I work in and um, flourished, quite frankly, it is important to make certain that all of the conversations are transparent. And that includes that um, reminding commissioners that you should not be texting to one another, um, that all of the deliberations should be very public and accessible. And, and this use of technology is definitely transformative, but we also have to be very cognizant of how are we reaching everyone. Um, the initiatives I had in Albion was um, to have the town hall meetings out in various neighborhoods of the community so that people had access to their elected officials and to our staff and that we can also share important information with them. Because one of the things you hear all the time in every um, level of government is citizens say they don't know what's going on. They don't know, you know what information is being um, what decisions are being made that are impacting their lives, but they don't they don't know about it. So how can we make certain that whatever those obstacles to having information as well as being having the opportunity to have input, how, what can we do to overcome those obstacles and open up the doors and build bridges to communication and engagement um, that may be innovative and may be um, looking at things and ways in which you have never done before, but at all times, it must be open and transparent and fair. Thank you. Any other follow-ups? I have one quick question, and I apologize, Dr. Mitchell. I just got your resume in front of me again. Um, on your resume, it says that you're currently a city administrator. Are you still presently? Yes, I am. Okay. Is that a full-time? I'm not real familiar with how administrations work and everything. Is that a full-time job? Is it something that you would be leaving to do this role or is it a job that's kind of part-time that you would be able to do on the side, I guess is what I'm asking. Well, I'm very glad you asked that question. <laughs> um, it is a full-time position and um, the mayor of um, Lathrop Village, in fact, asked me if this was something that I could do in conjunction. So could I work, reduce my hours and work part time there and do this role? Um, if that is not an option, then obviously I, I would have to devote my energies to this position. But to answer your question, um, it's negotiable at this point. Steve, I have a question. No. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Mitchell, um, I, I, taking a look at your resume, and could you explain to us what your current relationship is with the League of Women's Voters? And how, how, in addition to that, how do you see that relationship impacting your role as an executive director based on what their political objectives are? Well, as I understand it, their political object objectives are to educate and inform um, not necessarily to advocate. Um, so my current role with them is just simply as a member. I have not been active with them, um, quite frankly, since I went to Calhoun County. So that's been five years now. But in, in terms of the relationship with this body, um, in any way that we can use them as a support in getting information out to um, residents, they. Um, still do so, things such as the um, the voters guide where they offer unbiased information to voters in terms of evaluating uh, both candidates as well as um, issues that are on the ballot for their um, for their vote. So how can we leverage them and any other organization that is interested in educating voters? So, I would just see them as one of the many resources that we would have at hand. Thank you, Dr. Mitchell. Any other follow-ups from anybody? Okay. Um, Dr. Mitchell, uh, are there any questions that you have of us or any final comments that you would like to give us? 
Well, again, I want to thank you all for um, this exceptional honor and opportunity to be considered for the executive director of the Independent Citizens Redistricting, Redistricting Commission. My mouth is dry, sorry. <laughs> And again, I bring over 30 years of experience, and this is truly an exceptional opportunity um, to bring my, um, my skills, my talent, my education, uh, my support system um, to support you and the work that you have ahead of you. I, I bring um, an approach that's energizing, inspiring, motivating, and I, I love working with guiding boards and commissions and reaching their strategic goals. So I, I look forward to uh, working with you. And one of the questions I have, because I know you have a very tight time frame in order to move um, these objectives forward, and when did you have in mind for this individual to start? And what do you, how would you measure success of your executive director? That we don't get sued at the end of this process. So you're probably going to fail because everybody we've talked to has been sued. Yeah. Uh, no, we would, uh, I'm speaking for myself. Uh, and the others certainly can jump in. Um, we would measure success that, that you are able to, as an executive director, uh, help us to achieve our goals, of our, our goal of providing uh, redistricting in a, in a transparent, fair method that would take into account uh, not only the population, but the communities of interest, which we are required to do. Uh, and, and in doing that, that it, it would be a director who is working uh, with us. Anybody else? Okay, we will, uh, we, we will not be making a decision today. Uh, we are interviewing a number of people and uh, we will then consider what uh, the outcome will be and we will uh, let you know. I can't tell you when that will be but we will certainly uh, contact you. And we do have the, um, your uh, current job uh, in mind and whether it's negotiable full-time or part-time. I very much appreciate that. Thank you all. Thank you and have a, have yeah. a wonderful rest of your week. Okay, best wishes to you all and happy Thanksgiving holiday as well. You as well, Dr. Mitchell. Right now. Yeah, Rhonda. By chance, do we have time in our schedule for like a quick three minute break? Sure, we'll, uh, we'll take a little longer than three. We're running, how, Sally, how long did that one take? That one took about 30 minutes, um, you know, 30 well, we were, 35. We were 15 ahead on the other Here's one, the so. From the web. Uh, what? <laughs> yeah, so. Yeah, so you guys are good. I think you should take a break. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll take uh, we'll take uh, ten. So be back at twenty one, eleven twenty one. Oh Lord.
I just changed a setting on my microphone. Can you uh, hear me better now if I turn my head out of curiosity? Can't see you, but can hear you just fine. Oh, I'll fix that in a second. Hey, Dustin. Yes, sir. Yeah, this is Doug. Uh, sorry for the mix-up when we started the questions. Um, oh, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, it worked out fine. <laughs> the, um, yeah, Steve said, ask question number one. Uh, told me to, to ask question number one, and that's what I did. <laughs> I, I didn't know we shifted the uh, order or what, what was going on, so. I think it went fine. Yeah, I do too. I, 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 I was happy with uh, how it ended up. Thanks for your questions, all. I think you're doing great as a as a team to asking the questions. Yeah, really appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, I haven't done this in a number of years. Since 2010. Hey, Richard, I don't think we've said good morning yet, but glad you made it.
I think we have everybody <clears throat> back. We're, we're missing Brittany still. Oh, there she is. Okay. And uh, our next uh, interviewee is Janet, Jeanette Phillips. Uh, anything before she comes on? I do have everybody down in the right order now. I was looking at my wrong list. So uh, I will call on Dustin first this time. Yeah, we, uh, Dustin and I improvised to get through that. And you, so. you did a wonderful job, too. Okay. As soon as we have Miss Phillips, we will uh, get going. Okay. And, Hi, everybody. I made and, it. And there you are. There I am. Okay, uh, my name's Steve Lett and uh, I'm the chairperson of the commission and we will go around and uh, introduce ourselves to you. Um, and once again, the screen in front of me is rearranged so I will call on the people to introduce themselves. And uh, this time we start with Doug. My name is Doug Clark. I'm from uh, Rochester Hills, Michigan. And uh, I'm also a former EDS employee, Jeanette. So welcome uh, this morning. Thank you. Hi, Doug. Uh, once again, uh, my name is Steve Lett. As I said, I'm the uh, chairperson of the commission and uh, I currently live in uh, Interlaken. Uh, and uh, welcome. Thank you. Uh, Richard. Good morning. Uh, my name is Richard Weiss. I live in Saginaw, Michigan. It's nice to meet you. Rhonda. Good morning and thank you for being here with us. My name is Rhonda Lang and I'm from Reed City, Michigan. Hi. Cynthia. Hi, I'm Cynthia Orton. I live in Battle Creek, Michigan and we're really excited to talk to you today. Hi. Brittany. Good morning. My name is Brittany Kellum. I I'm coming to you from Detroit, Michigan, and I am the vice chair of the commission. Welcome. Hi, thank you. Janice. Hi, my name is Janice Follett. I'm in, I live in Highland Township. I'm welcome. Thanks. MC. Hi, I'm MC. I live in Lansing, Michigan. Nice to see you. Thanks for being here. Anthony. Good morning. Um, I'm Anthony Eade. I'm originally from Orchard Lake, Michigan. Uh, thank you so much for being here today and good luck. Thanks. Rebecca. Good morning. My name is Rebecca Zatella. I'm from Canton, Michigan and welcome and we look forward to speaking to you. Dustin. Good morning. My name is Dustin. I am from Ypsilanti, Michigan and uh, I look forward to speaking with you today. Thank you. Aaron. Good morning, Ms. Phillips. My name is Erin Wagner. I live in Charlotte, Michigan. I want to thank you for sending the addendum to your resume, and we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you. Thanks. Juanita. Can't hear you, Juanita. Can't hear you. You have to call. Using your phone. Okay, I got it. Uh, there you go. Yep. Hi, Ms. Phillips. We're glad to have you here with us today. My name is Juanita Curry. I'm from Detroit, Michigan, and we welcome you. Thank you. Hi. Okay. Uh, just a uh, few comments on the process here today. We have uh, some questions that we're going to ask you to respond to. And uh, they will be presented by uh, different members of the commission. Uh, after a question, after you respond, we will ask if there are any follow-up questions to your response to each question as we go. At the end, uh, I will ask you if you have anything to share with us that we haven't talked about, or any questions you have of us. Uh, do you have any questions before we start? Um, no, I okay. no. I'll just let you start. Thank you. Okay. 
Uh, Dustin. Okay. I uh, hope everyone can hear me better now, but uh, here's our first question. Um, why are you interested in this position and the work of the redistricting in Michigan in a more broad sense of form? Okay, well, I, um, when I saw the job posting on the MNA website, it, it, it just spoke to me, the fact that this work is really important to the entire state of Michigan. And I wanna thank you right now, no matter what decision you make, Thank you for being on this commission and you know, you're going to be helping me and everyone in the state. So um, it's such an important and beautiful um, work that you're going to do here in the next year. I know you're going to be working very hard. And um, when I read the job description, I just felt that I, I know it does. Um, it, pulls all of the things I've been good at and experienced throughout my career together to help lead a group of independent citizens to the finish line and to make the right decisions in this redistricting effort to help all of us. Um, it just really, the, the job description spoke to me and so I applied. Any follow-up? What do you feel uh, are, are a couple of things that you, you say the job description spoke to you? What, what parts, one or two things that you felt most important in that description that, that you feel your experience uh, will aid you in helping us? I think that the, um, the key point for this executive director role is that they need to support the commission. And um, I've had, um, I started my career and we can talk about it. I think it'll probably come up later. I started my career in corporate world. Um, I did a lot of, I was in sales. So I know how to communicate with people. I understand how to get groups of people to form consensus to get to the finish line, whatever that may be. My job was always to help clients. It wasn't to sell something, a box or a service. It's to help a client fix a problem that they have. That's the whole point. And clearly the problem you all need to solve in the redistricting of Michigan is a big problem. And, um, I love to help and that's just kind of who I am. I, I know I sent you a big document, three pages, but um, yesterday, but I tried to consolidate and can, you know, condense some of the information because this is only a 30 minute interview, but I'm very organized. I do my homework. I understand strategy and then the tactical steps required to get to the strategy to allow you all to make the decisions you need to make to help you get the information from the community to help you make those decisions. Um, you know, I see this role and, and who I am as a person as kind of lifting you up, giving you what you need, the base you need, not just myself, but an entire staff of people to help keep the wheels moving so you guys can really focus on the decision. You know what I mean? Getting your arms around all of the data and all of the information you need, talking to the various communities of interest throughout the state. Some we know, some maybe we'll discover on the way. Um, consolidating that information so that it's easy for you to grab. And then you guys are the ones who are going to make those decisions, right? It's, it's not me. It's not anybody behind the executive director, the staff. Obviously, the lawyer will provide you tons of guidance. And um, guidance, I suppose, is all he can do. You guys have to deliberate. You have to decide. Once you decide, then the map makers and, you know, all those people are going to put it together. But my job is kind of to orchestrate the back office so that you as the front office 
can do the job, not, not the administrative stuff, the working with the community, um, and obviously deliberating and then deciding to help us all. Hey, Doug. Yes, uh, Ms. Phillips. Um, you oh, call me, please call me Jeanette. Sorry. Just yeah. call me Jeanette. Thank you. <laughs> um, you mentioned uh, working with the staff. Mm -hmm. how, how do you envision the staff? What, what positions, uh, what type of support in the back office? You refer to it as back office. Um, how do you how do you see that being staffed and with what functions? Uh, well, I um, I'll answer that question, but first I want to let you know that I did a lot of homework once I got the email that said I was going to be a finalist. So I've um, watched every open meeting you've had so far, and I feel like I really know you all, even though you don't know me. I feel like I know you, and I um, really was listening to the California commissioners when they gave you some advice and the woman from Arizona. And um, so they talk, the California people especially talked about the fact that they didn't have enough time. Their budget blew up mainly for the lawsuits on the back end. And um, I found the, the org chart really of the California commission for this round. Um, and so I've modified it already. I'm like starting to think about it, but in big picture words, Doug, you know, you need an executive director. Um, I don't have government experience. Okay. So probably we would want to have someone on the team if Sarah or Sally weren't, I'm assuming maybe they'll stay part of the team. So then that we'll have that government liaison. But if we don't, we need a government person, just somebody that can help us navigate the state because I, I clearly I don't have that. Um, you'll have your legal person. That man or woman may need some support staff. I don't know. We'll have to ask. Communications director. She may need one support staff or contractors. But um, and then for me, the executive director. My what I see my strengths on and my role is to help with the budget and help with the timeline. I mean, those are the two big things we have to figure out fast is, you know, you have, call it, you have, I don't know, eight or nine months to get a lot of work done. We have to parse that up and just make sure that we have enough people on the team to do the planning, the event planning, the um, data collection, all the open meetings acts, making sure all the email, every, all the data, the kind of the data of your process is organized and um, accessible so that, um, again, in one of the conversations I've already heard, somebody said, you know, the best way to avoid FOIAs is to just have it open and then people just go and look. So it's all that thinking. And so is the staff 10 people? Is it five people? Is it 15? I don't think it'll be 15, but I'm not exactly sure, but I know kind of the big buckets. And clearly I would um, talk to people in the Secretary of State's office, talk to you guys, talk to California and, and help us all um, sort that out and make a recommendation to you. And obviously you guys make the decisions. I don't make any decisions. I don't wanna make the decisions. I wanna give you the information. Thank you. Any uh, follow-up? with her response. Yes, Anthony. <clears throat> Hello, Janet. Hi, Anthony. I see that um, included in the documents that you sent us was a 60-day uh, work plan. Mm -hmm. Can you speak a little bit about how you came up with this plan and kind of uh, your process that went into it? So, uh, sure. I, again, I did my homework and <laughs> you need somebody who's, who's proactive and is like, in, you know what I mean? And so, and again, you may not choose me and that's going to be okay, but I've learned a lot about what you've got to do for all of us. So it was fun. I had some fun and that's also important, right? You want to have fun, but absorbing everything I did and researched and learned, um, 
you know, I put this thing together. And um, again, the number one priority is just absorbing everything, which, you know, I've got a head start on. But I think that the, this hit list is appropriate for whomever you choose. Um, so this org chart, the draft budget, and the timeline are the top, you know, top three. We have to, you have to, we have to get our arms around how big the bread box is, right? You're like, okay, what are we, what are we doing? And when do we have to get it done? This gets to that question about strategic planning, but my job is to give you that roadmap so that you can decide who you want to meet with, when you want to do that, um, and then I make sure it happens so that you don't fall behind. Did I answer that? Yes, thank you. Okay. Any other follow up uh, on this response? Okay. Dustin? I can't, I'm sorry about my cat. Can you guys hear that cat in the background? <laughs> no noise all day. And now I got the cat. Uh, sorry. <laughs> I have, have two dogs and a cat, just so you know. I have a cat too that does the exact same thing. I just, he wants to, he, his name's Henry. He wants to come in and uh, I can either throw him in another room and walk away for a minute or you'll have to hear the cat. I'm sorry. I don't know what to tell you. The cat's It's okay. Fine. Henry is encouraging. He's encouraging you through the interview. Yeah. Well, he's okay. yeah, nagging me. <laughs> Okay. You know who's in charge? I'm, no, I'm never in charge, right? Everybody else is in charge, so I'm just like. <laughs> All right. Next, next question. Uh, yeah, this is uh, Doug Jenner. Um Can you tell us about a time when you had to facilitate a decision or consensus between multiple different people, organizations, and political parties? So. Um, I, um, I'm going to tell you as briefly as possible about my GM EDS um, project. And Doug, you worked at EDS, right? right. So, and this was back in the 90s. I, I was, you probably were there. I don't know, but um, I watched this. So, um, I'll talk about that in a minute. And then I'm going to segue into the political side of that. But um, again, I, I've worked in business and in nonprofits. I'm not political. And um, so a long time ago, I handled the GM EDS account for Ameritech. It was our largest account for the entire company of Ameritech, which is the five state region. The revenue was $30 million a year. And um, we supported their voice telecom across the country. And um, EDS came to us and to me and said, we want to outsource all the voice communications. It's not strategic. And th they focus on data more. So we, it's complicated sale, but we did it. I made, we made it happen. And um, I had to overcome a lot of internal um, challenges to even get to the point of getting a price to EDS that was acceptable. But then once we made the sale, you know, EDS is, um, I learned a lot from them. They're really strong organizationally, their, their purchasing department was amazing. I mean, their Ross Perot ran EDS. So he is, he was very, they're all very well trained, but um, we had to cut over. We had to convert the whole 200,000 voice ports in six months to coincide with the shutdown for GM in July, the 4th of July. Um, and again, we made the sale and internally, HR, operations, the technicians, uh, you name it, every department within Ameritech across the, you know, Chicago was headquarters, but um, no way, we can't get it done. No way, you don't have enough money in here. We don't have this. Blah, 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 blah. No, 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 all no. And I'm like, yes, <laughs> we have to get this done by the 4th of July. And so that whole process, I mean, I was just a salesperson. I wasn't a vice president. I wasn't the director, I wasn't uh, in charge of 5,000 people. It was me and this dispersed team, dotted line everywhere, just moving the elephant inch at a time. And um, we had to change out uh, 
computer systems. We hired hundreds of people from EDS. Their technician pool came over to our company. We had to bridge their service. There was all kinds of, you know, it's complex. We got it done. It was successful. We did it under budget for Ameritech. I know we saved EDS money. Um, it was very successful. And that um, process, I was young, you know, it was years ago, but I learned so much about how to bring people together, how to get different groups who may or may not agree, just keep inching them along for the big goal. And in our case, it was the July 4th, 4th cutover. In your case, it's like September 15th. You got to have maps ready for people to start poking at, right? So I'm, I think I'm your person to just get this organized and whatever I might lack in the government piece, um, we can find that help. Do you know what I mean? There are a lot of people here to help you. And um, between the academic people that you've listened to in the speeches and Sally and everybody behind Sally and Mike Brady, you know, there's a strong team there. So I just see myself as helping you get the, get the, the, you know, the noise away so you can focus on what you're really supposed to be doing is talking to the community and deliberating and then deciding what the best, the best answers are for all of us. Jeanette, the example you gave uh, relative to the, the, tele, the voice uh, cutover, um, now your responsibility was on the sales side. It wasn't the operational side of coordinating. Well, I ended up being the team lead for the whole implementation. I became the, pro the program manager for the implementation. That's what's so astounding about it. That was, that's the piece I tried to explain to you. I did okay. sell it. I had to do all the front end work. And typically the salesperson just sort of walks off and gets a check. Correct. Yeah, no, yeah, I, yeah. Yes. no, no, yeah. I did that. I had to do the job. And, and then after it was cut over, right, you still, there's still work to do. And, and like, once you make that decision and it becomes firm and I don't know, December 31st, <laughs> there's still work. And so I, I'm going to just answer that question. And I know it's not on your list, but after this is a two year contract is what it was written for. Mm -hmm. Why? You know what I mean? Here's the why. Because after it's done and the dust settles, we need to document everything for the next round. I, 10 years, it's probably not going to be me, it may or may not be you guys, but all of that information and the, the, you know, the best practices, what could we have done better, um, the documentation so people can see, you know, it's supposed, it's all open. And I commend you guys for doing so much in video. Um, but that work has to be done too. And I'll tie, I'll tie it in a bow at the back end. I, I know how to do this work. Any other follow-up uh, after that response? Okay, next question. Hey, Jeanette. So I think you touched on this a little bit already, but we're interested in how you engage in strategic planning. So what processes have you found useful and where would you start work of the commission? Okay, so I, I would refer back to that document that I sent to you guys as, you know, and again, I sent it early so you could see that I'm thinking I have the, de I'm a, you know, I'm a detail. I like to document things. I'm a good writer. I can lay it down. So um, again, as far as the strategic plan goes, I see my role as helping you, you have an end date, you have a date to, to meet, you know what the pieces are in between what you need to do. And the big thing to me, what I'm, you know, my, the thing that's like this in my head is talking to the public and the communities of interest, identifying them and then getting out there to talk to them and talk to them. Getting out there means what? Zoom. And um, it's going to be more complicated. And others have said, you know, we have to find groups that may or may not have technology available to them, but, you know, we can, we can figure that out. That, that doesn't worry me so much, but, um, you know the end goal. So now the strategic plan is just the plan. 
how do we get there and make it as hopefully it's going to be a lot of work for all of you, but I'm, my job is to make it as painless as possible. So you can say, I can trust that Jeanette is going to have this call ready. Jeanette is talking, Jeanette's team is talking to the right people to get the right communities of interest engaged. I um, think communication is obviously very important. And um, I would recommend, again, I don't, whatever, I suppose I can recommend, I'm not on the job, but um, subcommittees so that people who really care about the community of interest work, there's a little subcommittee to talk about that. Some people like the lead, there are two lawyers on your team, legal piece, they'll be talking to your lawyers, like divide and conquer a little bit. But again, the communication, everyone has to be moving together. Um, and then, you know, the, the plan unfolds and it, the work gets done. Is that okay? okay. Yes. Any, any follow-up on that uh, response? All right. Anthony. Okay. Well, I have uh, two questions for you. The first being, what is your political party affiliation? And have you made uh, political party contributions in the past? So... This, even though I, this to me, this is a bit of a complicated question for me. And um, I'm gonna answer it first by saying, number one, I really commend this commission, even though some are Democrats, some are Republican, some are independent, you don't talk about it. You don't bring it up. I remember in one of the videos, MC's like, well, do we have one of each person on this committee? I don't even know who they are. I'm like, wow, I love it. So I, I just want to lay that out first. I am not anything. You know, in the end, I'm a person and I see the job and I want to help you guys get the job done. Now I'll answer Anthony's question, but I hope it isn't whatever. I'm just going to answer it. Back in the 80s when Ronald Reagan was, you know, king, I joined the Republican Party. I was a lifetime member. I guess I still am. Then 2016 happened. And again, I'm not political. I never, I whatever, I just joined. I paid the money, like I joined the um, Alumni Association of the University of Michigan. I wrote one check for the lifetime membership. And I did the same thing with this because I'm um, cheap and the reason I joined the Republican Party is because I'm a fiscal conservative. I want us to pay our bills. I can't stand the deficit being so high and, you know, our kids and our grandkids are going to pay the price of things that are done. So, so I believe in the Republican tenets of fiscal conservancy, conservative, you know, conservatism, keeping government out of people's lives, blah, 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 all that. 2016 changed me and obviously it changed a lot of people. So um, I, I, I don't know what I am anymore. And uh, I did not vote for, I did not vote for Republicans. I can't do it right now. So I guess I'm independent. I mean, I, I just, I homeless. So um, it's a weird, it's a weird, it's a weird time. Right. But um I did donate um, Rosemary Bayer, who you got two reference letters from me. Rosemary Bayer is a friend, personal friend. When I worked for Michigan Council of Women and Technology, Rosemary was the founder of MCWT. So um, in 2016, she just said, I, I wanna be part of the solution, which is kind of why I'm applying as well. I wanna be part of the solution, not stand around complaining about it all day. So um, so she ran for state Senate and obviously I contributed because she's a friend and I had a fundraiser for her. I also donated um, for Martin Brook, who also was a Democrat, but Martin um, two years ago ran against in the primary against Andy Levin, who is our um, congressman. He did, obviously didn't win. And this time he ran for the Bloomfield Township clerk and he won. So I donated to Martin Brook. He's another personal friend. His son went to high school with my girls. Um, and then I've donated to Gary Peters this time around. I mean, you know, not 
$50 here and there because I, I just see, I, whatever, I can't, this is my personal side, right? So I want things fixed and um, I am not political. I just am not, but um, I can see how I can help the state of Michigan in this role, helping you all do your jobs, get out there and figure out what the right answers are. So I don't, I'm just not that person, you know, I'm not the political person, but I, um, you know, I got a little more active. That's all I can say. And I, I know I spent a lot of time on that, Anthony, but um, I'm, I feel like I'm right dead center in the middle of everything because of where I was. And anyway, I'll stop there. <laughs> well, I'll just say, uh, you know, thank you for, for that answer. Um, and thank you for being, you know, so honest and upfront about it. Um, these are extraordinary times and, you know, I for one do realize that. Um, so thank you. Um, my next question, uh, are there any follow-ups um, to that answer from anybody? Go ahead, Dan. Okay. Um, my next question, and you know, you've spoken on this uh, a little bit, but how do you envision the relationship between the executive director and the commissioners? And how would you approach communication and your relationship with the commissioners, both on an individual and uh, group wide level? So, you know, I've thought about that a lot and I've read up on this um, Open Meetings Act, the OMA work, and I'm still a little confused on um, the process. But um, I spoke to a friend who is a school board member and the executive director role is, you know, comparable to the superintendent of schools in some ways, although different because the superintendent is in charge of education and I'm just in charge of making sure you guys are happy. But um, I, I think the relation, A, the relationship needs to be very strong and I need to be on the team, right? So it's the 13 of you and number 14 would be me. That's the way I see it. And so um, whatever you need is what I'm going to provide for you. I'm going to try to anticipate your needs so I can bring them to you and say, oh, wow, I hadn't thought of that. Let's talk about it. And you'll, you guys will decide, obviously. But um, I mean, I just, email is, I love email. And um, so group emails, um, if someone emails me, I think the process is if Steve Lett emailed me with some question or issue, I have an obligation to reply to everyone, not just back to Steve. And we'll have to get clarification on that, right? But um, there are rules to making sure that we are open and um, tracking everybody's on the same page. And again, you know, just moving along together. So, you know, I'm on the team and I'm here to work for you. And we'll figure out what the rules are on that communication. You know, I don't want to overstep. I don't want to make any mistakes. You're going to have enough lawsuits on the back end. We don't need one because I don't, I'm stupid. I'm not stupid. So, you know what I mean? We'll work with the state to sort that out, but we will talk a lot. <laughs> Any follow-up on that answer? Okay. Well, that was a good line from Hamilton. I like that. <laughs> I uh, don't even know. I don't even know the line from Hamilton. So. <laughs> oh, well. Well, the line is, I'm, I'm, I'm not stupid. Oh, um, oh, there you go. I don't even know that. Sorry. <laughs> you, were, you were doing real well with until me said, until, until you said that you had lifetime member with uh, University of Michigan alumni. Oh, so, sorry. Since I graduated <laughs> from MSU. Okay, well, don't please don't hold that against me. We, we won't. We won't. <laughs> um, sorry. You said humor was important, so. Uh, are there any questions that you have of us or are there any final comments that you would like to make? Um, so I, you know, I wrote up a little closing remarks and um, I do have one question at the end and with luck, there might be a little time for you to answer it. But um, 
I, I'm not going to read this, but I just, again, I want to thank you all for stepping up and being the commissioners. I know you lost two already and um, Rebecca is in, is in the chair and I hope I, it looks like you're going to stick. So that's wonderful. They need a good <laughs> cohesive team. Um, and again, I'm, I just, I, I have, I, I am always thinking 4,000 steps, you know, three or four steps ahead. I'm very detail oriented. I will help you guys get the, the noise out so you can focus on the real decisions. Um, but again, I want to thank you for doing this. It's a big job that you have undertaken. And um, I would love to be a part of the team. I hope I am. Um, and if I'm not, I wish you all good luck because I've learned a lot in the week of, you know, studying for this. My question though is, um, and I would love a few answers, but um, as you begin thinking about this process and the work ahead, what's keeping you up at night? And what will what can the executive director do to help you um, from you know staying awake, worrying for the next year? Well, uh, I don't know that we need 13 answers to your question. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think probably, uh, and other people can answer, but I think probably uh, what keeps us up at night is a couple of things. One would be what's going to happen with the census. That seems to be an, uh, an issue that's going to be uh, ongoing and, and somewhat unsettled. Uh, and I think probably the timeline and, and how are we going to meet with, with people, as you have so succinctly stated, uh, you know, we have to meet with communities of interest, find out where they are, uh, and use technology as much as possible, but everybody does not have technology. So we're gonna to to figure out a way to, to get out in the hinterlands and, and talk to people. Anybody else? Rhonda. I'll go. One thing that keeps me up at night is public perception. Are we portraying ourselves to the public the way that we wanna be seen? Um, I'm constantly in everything I do and say, trying to think of that in it gets a little taxing. I've said it many times before, you can't make everybody happy. But in my mind, that's what I'm always worried about is trying to make everybody happy or do the best that we can to make everybody happy. So that would be my one stressor. Well, as both Rebecca and I know, if we make everybody ticked off, we've done our job. Anybody else? I think I'll share that um, I think a lot about the execution of and doing it with fidelity, making sure that we have accurate information and data to take on this enormous task of, I mean, not that we're literally drawing the lines ourselves, but there's a lot that goes into that. So I think there's a lot of reflection and curiosity, at least for me, that goes into that literal process of our, of our role. Okay, anybody else? All right, well, uh, thank Jeanette, we, we thank you. We thank you for your, your answers and your insight and the information you provided to us uh, in advance. Uh, tell Henry, he sounds like a very nice cat. He's a nice cat, he's, uh, little, he's getting old. <laughs> we will um, not have an answer today. We're not gonna make a decision today. Uh, we will uh, make one shortly and uh, you will be notified of whatever our decision is. But uh, don't sit around thinking that this coming Friday you're going to get an answer because yeah, you probably won't. So. I know. Thank you. And again, just thanks for the opportunity and best wishes because this is wonderful. I'm so happy that you guys are doing this work. Okay. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you, you bye very bye. much. All right, any, um, any questions before we move on? Any comments? Okay, next person is Suze, Su, Sue Ann Hammersmith.
Welcome, uh, Ms. Hammersmith. Well, thank you very much. I'm pleased to be here today. Good. We're, we're pleased that you are here today also. Uh, my name is Steve Lett. I'm the commission uh, chair. And uh, first thing we're going to do is go around and introduce ourselves to you. And I will call upon the people to do so, um, starting with Doug. My name is uh, Doug Clark Su Suan, and uh, I'm from Rochester Hills, and uh, welcome you this afternoon. Uh, once again, my name is Steve Lett, and as I said, I'm the chair. I uh, hail from Interlochen, Michigan, and uh, would you prefer to use your first name or Ms. Hammersmith? You may certainly call me Sue. I feel like I know everybody. I've sat in on all the meetings, um, so yeah, I feel like we're friends. Well, Sue it'll be, and evidently you don't have a life if you've been watching us. <laughs> Uh, Richard. Good afternoon, Richard Weiss uh, from Saginaw, Michigan. It's nice to meet you. Rhonda. Good afternoon, Rhonda Lang, Reed City, Michigan. Want to welcome you and look forward to speaking with you. Cynthia. I'm Cynthia Orton. I live in Battle Creek, Michigan, and we're very excited to interview you today. Brittany. Good afternoon. My name is Brittany Cullum. I had to check the time. I am a native Detroiter and I'm the vice chair of the commission. I welcome you to your interview. Janice. Hi, I'm Janice Follett. I'm in Highland Township. Um, welcome, Sue. MC. Hi, Sue. MC, Lansing, Michigan. Glad you're here. Anthony. Good afternoon, sir. Sue, I'm <clears throat> Anthony Eid um, from Orchard Lake, Michigan. Thank you so much for being here today and good luck on your interview. Rebecca. Good afternoon, Sue. Rebecca Zatella from Canton, Michigan. Welcome. Dustin. Good afternoon, Sue. My name's Dustin uh, Witches. I'm from Ypsilanti, Michigan, and I look forward to uh, speaking with you a little bit today. Uh, Aaron. Hello, Sue. Thank you for um, meeting with us today. My name is Aaron Wagner, and I hail from Charlotte, Michigan. Juanita. Unmute yourself. Juanita, I believe you need to press star six on your phone. Press star six. There you go. Now introduce yourself. Good afternoon, Sue. My name is Juanita Curry. I am from Detroit, Michigan, and I welcome you here today. Thank you. Um, the process today will be, uh, we have uh, four of our, uh, three of our uh, commissioners will be asking some questions of you and uh, after the, your response, uh, any commissioner who has a follow-up question based upon your response uh, will be allowed to ask it. And at the end, we'll give you an opportunity to ask any questions you may have of us or to uh, make a final statement should you wish to do so. Uh, any questions about the process? Not at all, thank you very much. Okay, uh, first uh, will be Dustin. Okay, so the first question we have for you is, uh, why are you interested in this position and in the work of the Redistricting Commission of Michigan? And can you speak on it in a more broad uh, kind of sense? Um, thank you very much, Justin. Um, when I first saw this posting, I got excited and I've been looking for a new career and a new challenge for the last three months. And I have not applied for anything else. I've seen things and thought maybe, maybe not. But this one I could get passionate about because I think it's really important to have a life of service. And I can serve this commission and the state of Michigan through this process. And to me, that's just really exciting. 
I'm enthusiastic about the work. I'm enthusiastic about a voice for everyone that everyone's heard no matter who they are um, through this process. And uh, I believe I can bring to you the skills of an executive director having served in that position for over 30 years with three organizations. Any follow-up uh, to that response? Okay, Doug. Uh, Suzanne, um, can you tell us uh, about a time when you had to facilitate a decision or consensus between multiple different people, organizations and political parties? Uh, sure, what comes to mind for me is in 2016, our local United Way came to the Community Foundation where I was the executive director and they asked us to adopt them into our organization. And those are two distinctly different organizations with different missions, different purposes. Um, and it, it was quite a challenge. I will tell you that um, they publicly announced this in June. Their members voted in uh, early July and we had to launch an annual campaign by the mid of uh, August that year, an annual campaign. Um, I, that, was, <laughs> that was a very tight timeline as one of our volunteers described it. The plane was taken off and we were still changing the tires. I mean, it really involved a, a very a significant organizational process, engaging volunteers, um, much communication with our community as to what was happening. Um, there were a few little complications along the way. Uh, the United Way Worldwide wasn't too keen on one of their affiliates um, abandoning them. So they sent a neighboring community in. So their labor unions came and picketed us. And we, we had some <laughs> very interesting times as we navigated the public communications about, you know, hey, we're people who want to work together and do what's best for our community. So um, in the end, we did work together. We did do what was best for the community. Um, we even had United Way board members that weren't on board, but their board had voted. So uh, we were able to engage people in the process, create our rules of operation and guidelines, our policies, our procedures, our grant making processes, and launch by mid-August uh, this annual campaign, which uh, had a great result. Uh, we retained the donors that we expected to retain in the process, um, while we also had another organization um, essentially competing with us for the same monies. Um, long story short, it was pretty contentious at the beginning. They, they just really didn't like what we were doing and, and uh, the United Way Worldwide was really upset to be losing their brand in the community. And we felt we were doing what was best for the community and we did what was best for the community. Um, our grant making increased significantly. We uh, increased the percentage of the amounts raised um, by about 40% that went in grant making to the nonprofits. And that's our goal is to serve the community and get the money where it can do the most good. So um, it, it was, it's been very successful and um, I'm pleased that we could do that. I've got a follow-up question for you relative to your role as executive director with the United Way. Can you explain in detail your sp specific job duties uh, how you approach those duties, how you would compare this to your perception of the executive director job with us? Sure, that's a loaded question. Um, it is. Yes, um, well, when I started, my first executive director job was with Cystic Fibrosis Foundation of Northwest Ohio. I live really close to the state line. And um, I remember every day I would come home and my husband would say, so what do you do as executive director? And I always answered, when I figure it out, I'll let you know. <laughs> so um, I, I think I figured it out after 30 plus years. Um, my goal is to serve the community and serve the organization and to fulfill the mission of the organization. Um, I'm a partner with the board of directors. I'm there to facilitate their work, to provide them with the information, the resources, the data they need in order to make good decisions on behalf of the organization. And in the meantime, I'm in the background with day-to-day -day work and management, making sure that all the wheels are turning. My board chair told me recently, he said he had never, in 20 years working with him, he had never lost any sleep 
knowing that I had everything in order for the organization and I wouldn't let anything slip through the cracks. So I was um, honored that he said that about me. Um, it involves all facets of, of management from public relations to HR, to budgeting, to reporting, to grant writing, to reporting out on grants. Um, there are, you're spinning many plates and wearing many hats um, as an executive director. Um, when I started at United Way, I had an admin assistant and uh, an accountant. And when I started at the Lenaway Community Foundation as the first ex executive director, a founding executive director, I had no staff, no secretarial staff, no support staff. I did everything. So I built that organization from the ground up and um, it's been very successful. And because I think of the trust in those organizations, I was able to partner with people to raise over $55 million in Lenaway County, Michigan, which is a small community. Great. Can, can you identify uh, what you feel your strengths are as an executive director? Um, I am very organized. Excel spreadsheets are my friends. I, I um, engage people. We've, we've done a lot of community engagement work. Um, I partner with donors. Um, donors come to us and ask how they can build a better community. We've partnered with many, many donors to do that. So I think I'm a consensus builder, I'm a facilitator, I'm a board supporter. Um, and I understand the day-to-day -day work that needs to be done to um, you know, make everything happen. Thank you, Sue. I'll Thank turn you. it over to you, Steve. Any follow-up from anybody on that, based on that response? Okay, Dustin? Okay. Um, one thing that we're interested in is how you engage in strategic, strategic planning. Uh, what processes have you found useful and where would you start with the work of the commission? Well, I was very fortunate about 20 years ago to, to take a course called the Plan Change, Planned Change Internship. And that was a very interesting strategic planning process um, led by the son of the person who really created the field of organizational development. Um, both were professors at U of M, sorry, Steve, I said that word again, but you know, I like MSU too. Um, so uh, we took this a nine month course, four leaders from our community took this together as a team, and then we went out as a team to engage in strategic planning for various organizations in the community. Um, one of the first was a city that wanted to bring all the people together that were decision makers. So it was the city manager, their council, um, and like th places like the DDA, uh, the planning commission, all those people together in one room because they did their jobs in silos and he felt it was important that they start communicating to each other. So prior to the meeting, one of the uh, council members and the city manager got in a big argument about the city manager having ulterior motives and bringing them all together. And all of a sudden, one of them was saying, let's take this outside. And it was like, oh my goodness, <laughs> this is my first experience. So they eventually came back, there was no blood. <laughs> Um, we had a great process. People did participate. People did um, work with each other. And um, I guess the happy ending was a couple of years later, I was invited back to do the same um, process all over again with some new people so that had been involved. So, um, you know, I have been involved in strategic planning with many, many organizations from the sheriff's department to um, other cities um, and many, many nonprofits. Um, another um, Another uh, place where I think planning was really critically important for our state, where I've had some fringe involvement, is the Council of Michigan Foundations, of which I'm a member, raised $4.7 million to uh, make the census a key focus of the philanthropic community in our state to get people to respond to the census. Um, they partnered with, with the Michigan Nonprofit Association, who carried out the process and the plan and engaged 10 regional hubs where this work flowed in our community and getting people to the table to fill out the census. I believe this is a great learning experience and one that can be utilized to engage communities of interest 
as we uh, reach out to communities and try to get their input and their involvement to make sure this process is fair. Um, in addition to these examples then, you know, it's critically important to create a work plan. When I left my job um, last in the summer, um, I gave a specific roadmap to my successor. He, he had extensive spreadsheets of everything that had been done, where to find documents, what was important, what he needed to do next, which committee was working on what. So he had a very clear roadmap as to where the organization was going and had a starting point for what he needed to do. Um, with strategic planning, certainly we'll look at where we are. We want to create norms for working together. We may want to create rules of operation for working together so we fully understand the process we're going to engage in. And then my job will bring processes, procedures, ideas, resources to the table to help you do your work. Any follow-up uh, questions based on that response? Yeah, I, I've got one uh, for you, Sue Ann. Uh, you indicated you use Excel as a tool for planning. What, what are the other tools that, you, that you've uh, had experience with in planning and used? Um, I'm, I think the best tool is, be is communication. I mean, strategic planning is about working together. It's communication. It's being transparent and open and bringing people to the table that will express their thoughts giving everybody a voice at the table. So um, as far as specific um, software, um, no, I use Word and Excel primarily um, okay. to do that work. But the real work is in engaging people in the process so that everybody has a voice. So tools such as Microsoft Project, you don't use those types? I have of not used Project. No, I have not. But I'm willing to learn. I'm a no, quick I'm learner. Just, I'm curious on, on what tools you've used your work okay thank you okay any other uh, follow-ups anthony i think we're up to you okay so sue i have two questions for you today uh the first being is do you have a political party affiliation and have you made political party contributions in the past Okay, well, I, I have to admit, I really don't know the answer to the first question as far as affiliation. I may have registered for a party 40 years ago when I, when I registered to vote in Michigan in the, at my current address, but I honestly don't know if I'm registered as a Democrat or Republican or independent. And I will tell you, I vote for the candidate who I feel can do the best job. So I, I understand partisanship but um, I also understand that this is a nonpartisan position. And I will tell you in the fundraising world for nonprofits, you cannot be partisan and raise money because if you affiliate yourself with one of the parties, persons from the other party will not come along and be engaged with your organization. So I've always had to be nonpartisan throughout my career. And I would fully expect to be nonpartisan in this position and, and guide, I, I would lead by example. Um, and I have not made any political contributions. Any follow-up questions on that? Okay. Um, I didn't skip you, did I, Dustin? Okay. Um, my final question is, how do you envision the relationship between the executive director and the commissioners? And with that, how do you plan to approach communication with us both on an individual level and at a group level? Um, my job as an executive director would be to give you whatever you need in order to be successful in your job. So that is bringing the resources to the table, bringing my expertise and my experience to the table, um, bringing uh, the consultants to you if that's what you feel you need and, you, and we will. Um, my job is to serve you and to carry out those things that you would like me to do in order to serve you. I will help you with processes and procedures and um, work plans and whatever you need in order to be successful. My communication will be open and transparent. That's who I am. Um, 
I, um, I've not had past experience with the Open Meetings Act. I have read extensively on what it is. I've listened to Mike Brady say, you know, any deliberation or decisions need to be made as a public body. So I understand that and I will work very hard to fulfill that role and make sure that everything is open and transparent. That's who I am anyway. That as a nonprofit, I would say we didn't have any law. So we had to work harder at being open and transparent with our community. We had to communicate with our community and let them know what we were doing because we didn't have open meetings. So we really made a conscientious effort to inform our community of who we were and what we were doing. And in some respects, I think that's um, harder than an Open Meetings Act where anybody can just tune in and, and see what's happening. Any uh, follow-up questions uh, based on these answers? Uh, to any of the answers? Rhonda. Just real quick, I was skimming over your resume again. So you don't have any government experience per se, correct? I have never worked for government. I have voted. I have participated in gov government. I've encouraged people to vote, encouraged people to complete the census. We did an extensive social media campaign for people to complete the census. I, you know, I believe in the work of government. I believe I certainly can be nonpartisan because I've not been visible in any respect for any political party. Okay, any, anything else from anybody? Well, I, I, I looked at your uh, resume and I see you have a relationship with Western Michigan. Well, Am I in I, trouble again? <laughs> no, 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 no. Okay. no I, I went to Cooley Law School and they affiliated with uh, Western, but now they're going to mm -hmm. kick us out. So I don't know what oh, we're going to do no. now. <laughs> oh, no. So, uh, at any rate, do you have any questions of us? And if not, do you have a final statement you would like to make? Well, I certainly appreciate the work you're doing and I thank you for this bold step of being part of this commission. This is really, really important work for the state of Michigan for our citizens. It's incredibly important. And I certainly would be so honored to be part of your work, um, helping you as a commission and helping the citizens of Michigan um, be a part of the process being a part of the solution for redistricting that hasn't maybe gone so well in the past. And uh, I, I would love to work with you to create a fair and nonpartisan process to um, make our state so much better. It's, I love the great state of Michigan. I've been a resident all my life. Um, I, I would be committed 100%. You will find no one with a better work ethic than I have. And I believe I have the skills, the experience to uh, help you with your work and would be so honored to do so. So thank you. And I guess my last question might be, when can I start? <laughs> we, we don't know. <laughs> okay. uh, it, it won't be today, it won't be tomorrow. Okay. Uh, we uh, are, don't anticipate making a decision on a, on a final candidate. Uh, today, uh, we will take our time, uh, though it, will, it won't be a long time, and uh, we will notify uh, all of the candidates of what our decision is. So uh, I wouldn't say, uh, don't be sitting on your mailbox this Friday expecting <laughs> a, a notification uh, one way or another. But we do appreciate you taking your time and coming and speaking with us today, and we very much appreciate that. Uh, with that, um, I thank you and uh, good luck. Thank you, everyone. Bye now. Okay, I think we are up to Amna Siebold or Seibold. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to, do we ask the last two candidates the same question that we asked the first two about the level of transparency? I just wanted to make sure we, because I think Steve, you asked that as the last question, but I don't remember hearing that for the- I know I, I did not ask that again. Uh, okay. I mean, that was kind of a follow-up that I did on, depending on what their answers were. So. Okay. 
I, I think she certainly, I guess my opinion is that in her response on her foundation that she had to be uh, transparent with, without an Open Meetings Act command that she made every effort to do that, so. Okay. Ah, uh, Amna, is it Amna? It is Amna. It's Seabold or Seibold? It's Seibold, but I would prefer if you would just call me Amna. Both of my names are pretty tough. So um, just Amna, that's good. And um, Commissioner Lett, I have watched all of the introductions, but more importantly, like several of the other candidates, I've watched every minute of your meetings and I already feel like I know uh, all of the commissioners. And since you are under some time constraints, I am fine with not having them go through and identify themselves. I will just say hello to all. And uh, really, I feel like I know you. Well, I'll, I'll make the same comment I made with the last person and you, you need a life. If, you, <laughs> if all you're doing is sitting around watching us, you need a life. No, if you're passionate about this, you I mean, I have had nothing but joy in learning about the process, learning about you, uh, this has been great. Yeah. You're getting in deeper. <laughs> Guess I do need a life, but this is the life I want, so. <laughs> All right, okay, we'll skip the introductions. That's what okay. you wanna do. And uh, first up, uh, you, I assume then you've heard my introduction of how we do this. I have indeed. Okay, well, I don't need to listen to myself talk. Dustin, you're up. <laughs> Hold on a second. I got tracked because we're not doing introductions. Okay, I, 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 skipped, I skipped ahead. <laughs> uh oh, Dustin, we lost your voice. Okay, I should be back now. Okay, so our first question is, uh, why are you interested in this position and the work of the redistricting uh, Commission of Michigan in a more uh, broader sense? Okay. Um, well, first of all, thank you all for uh, bringing me to the uh, final six. I'm really very um, proud and encouraged. Um, I was very excited to hear that I was going to be interviewed but I'm excited about this for exactly the same reasons you are, because I've listened to you all talk about your passion for this. When I heard about this whole commission being created, when I learned about the ballot initiative, I was so excited because for so long, we've had a crummy process in Michigan. And Michigan's not alone, but we ended up with absolutely gerrymandered districts and we weren't serving the citizens. And so, I'm excited to be part of it because it's the right thing to do. And I want to see this go through to fruition and be proud of the work. You're all gonna turn around and for the next 10 years, you're gonna be pointing to that and say, that's the good work that I did. Um, you are absolutely gonna be proud of it. And I would like to also help you in, in that role. You're the decision makers. I wanna be there to help you be successful. Now, I, I will also say that when I heard about this role, I, um, I had four people call me pretty late in the process because I hadn't seen it posted. Two of them were Republicans, two of them were Democrats. And they all said, you need to run for this, you would be great. So that's another reason why I put my hat in. Any follow-up from any of the commissioners on that answer? Okay, Doug? I'm Doug Clark Amna, and uh, <coughs> welcome this afternoon. Thank you. Um, can you tell us uh, about a time when you had to facilitate a decision or consensus between multiple different people, organizations, and political parties? Yes. Um, Got a great example. <clears throat> when I first was thinking about this position, I was thinking about a particular meeting that I, I, I've had, you know, had in many meetings. But when I first became mayor, there was a very contentious issue going on in our community. Um, there was a, a loud group that really wanted to have a historic district. We, we have as many um, cities around the state do. We have um, a lot of the older homes are being purchased, torn down, and new homes being put up, and that was bothering people. 
And when you look at the law behind it, really the only way to affect that is if you create a historic district and then you can um, have more control over what people do with their homes and their property. So there was a lot of um, pressure for pe from people saying, we need to have a historic district. And as mayor, I said, we need more information. So I put together a um, subcommittee and asked them to take six to 12 months, do the research much like what you are doing here. Go bring in the professionals, bring in the people with knowledge, do your research and then come back and make your recommendation as to what you would like to see the city do and why. So doing that work, we started to hear a lot of discussion, a lot of social media, people coming to meetings and talking about it. And we're like, trust me, we're gonna have a big meeting to talk about this. So when they finally were done with their reports, I asked, um, <coughs> I asked for two things. I said, if I'd like to hear the pros and cons. So I'd like to have the people that are in favor on this commission, in favor of the historic district, please present why. And the people that are not in favor of it, please present why. And then we're gonna have conversations with the rest of the community. And we put this meeting into the high school auditorium because normally the city commission, you're lucky if you get 15 people there. And we knew this was gonna be a big meeting. As we went into the meeting, I had our city manager and our city yeah. attorney say, this is gonna be a mess. And I said, it will not be a mess. We are going to be respectful and we're going to have rules in place. And this is going to be really invigorating. This is gonna help us reach decision. And so when we started the meeting, I, I explained we we're gonna hear both sides and then everyone could come to the microphone. They had two minutes, we set up a clock so you could see the clock and you had to finish within two minutes. And I said to them, please stick within your two minutes because I will have to cut you off and I really don't wanna do that. Make me look mean. Um, and uh, please no cheering and no jeering. I don't want applause after people. I just want them to state their opinions and get them out. So it was a very long meeting. We let, allowed everyone to speak who was there, who was interested in, in talking. And as it went for, I think that going into this meeting, most commissioners felt like we were going to have a historic district because that was all of, the, all of the input that we'd been getting was strongly in that direction. And after hearing from the whole community, it was, easily three to one against having a historic district. Very, very passionately no. And that's what we ended up voting. But what I was most proud about was how the whole community, even though I knew that they were very strong emotions, how they conducted themselves during the meeting and we were able to hear all sides. So I think that's a good um, example of how you work together, you make sure all the voices are heard and you bring consensus. And um, the few of the commissioners that were going to vote for it said to me, this was helpful. I hadn't thought about all these other sides and they changed their vote. That is a good example. Uh, we're, a big part of our work is gonna be public meetings. Yes. Um, as we move forward, we're obligated to, to have so many. Uh, I looked at your resume, mm -hmm. and uh, one of the items that uh, you indicated you worked with area mayors uh, to put forward a 12-year yeah. village for the yeah. county mm -hmm. uh, relative to transportation. Did you organize that? Did you facilitate that, or were you just a member of that? So we all sat on the board of the Rapid, which is the um, uh, mass transit here in the Kent County area. And these were the mayors that were involved. And during our deliberations, we were talking about going forward to um, uh, go, go to a vote to the public to get the funding restored. And um, it had always been, if I remember correctly, I think it was three year increments. Every three years they'd go back. And I brought up to the area mayors, I said, let's talk about that. How much money do we spend every three years advertising this and trying to get community buy-in. If we want community buy-in and our mass transit is so important to so many of our communities, let's put something in place that's going to make us feel more stable for a longer period of time. And I think that we should extend the length for this ballot initiative. <coughs> and we kind of talked around 20 years, 15 years, 10 years, five years and uh, we ended up putting, I believe the final was 12 years. And so 
there was that period of time that we weren't going to have to go back. The voters had already shown that they wanted it. And so let's just put that on the ballot. And um, it's interesting when I got off the board of the rapid, uh, a couple of the board members pointed that out as one of, they were so impressed by the fact that I was able to bring that forward, have the idea and get everyone to coalesce around it. That's right. And I, and I did absolutely always work with the area mayors. I know them all, Republicans and Democrats, and we work together very smoothly. Yeah, that was, that was going to be my other question. Uh, I'm assuming that they weren't all Democratic or Republican mayors. Nope, both. Okay. If, when you work with those other mayors, you become the focal point of organizing things with them or are there is there another individual that, no that... i think it, i think it depends on you know what what's going on um i think because you know the 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 big dogs always kind of you know the head of it right so mayor bliss who i really admire respect um she often would bring us together if there were things to discuss and as i said we sat together on this mass transit board and so there was um monthly or bi-monthly, we would have an opportunity to meet with each other. But as issues came up, um, it depends on what the issue is, who would bring us together. Okay, thank you, Amanda. I'll mm -hmm. turn it back to you, Steve. Okay. Any follow-up questions from uh, those responses from any of the commissioners? All right, uh, Dustin. Something's not working right here. There you go. Now, now we hear you. We're on question four now, right? Those was three. So when does it be Anthony's question? Oh. Okay. Anthony. Okay. So, Amna, um, I have two questions for you today. Okay. The first being, uh, what is your political party affiliation? And have you made any political party contributions in the past? Okay. So... Let's just get the elephant in the room here. <laughs> Let's just talk about that. So apparently I am the lightning rod. Um, you've all seen the letters that have come in. And uh, I absolutely looked online this morning to see what all had been put in there. And those letters all arose from one person who for a very long time has not liked me. And Yesterday afternoon, he put out a call and asked people to write those letters. So this is very interestingly, the first time of many that you are going to be, attempt to be swayed by social media. And that is absolutely what's happening here. So in those letters, they call me a very partisan mayor Republican. Have I contributed to Republicans? Yes, I have. Have I contributed to Democrats? Yes, I have. Have I contributed to Republican and Democratic um, uh, organizations? Yes, I have. Because just as a, a, and of course, you know, I listened to the, the previous candidates, just as some of them have said, people have history People have background. It's how you operate when you are in a job. And when I was mayor, I absolutely operated as a nonpartisan mayor. And the people that I um, appointed came from all parties. I often didn't even know what party they were from. Now, the irony here is that the very first appointment I ever did was for a city commission seat. Normally you're elected, but we had an open seat when I became mayor. And the person that I appointed was a very strong Democrat. And I had several people say to me, well, you know, do you want to have somebody that's so strongly in one direction or the other? And I said, I just want people who are going to do a good job. And he's really interested in this. So yeah, yeah, we'll do that. So um, the two times I actually appointed uh, 
people into the commission chair, and that's the most important appointment, they both happen to be Democrats. People I pointed to the subcommittees, I would say equal parts Republican or Democrat if I had to guess, and independents, um, because that's what our community is made up of. And I was just looking for people to do, do the, the good work. Um, as far as issues go, as some of the other candidates have said to you earlier on these interviews, I feel much the same way. There are some things that I, uh, I'm a fiscal conservative. As someone said, I like to watch my pennies, absolutely. Um, I'm a social liberal. Um, I will say I had someone approach me and ask me to run for the state legislature as a Republican. And I said, well, that's amusing because I couldn't get elected as a Republican. And they said, oh, and I said, no. And I proceeded to tell them things that I believe. And they said, you could never be elected as a Republican. I said, I know. <laughs> so because I really, I, I have um, views on both sides. So this plethora of messages that you've gotten today, I just, want to, I just want you to be cognizant of the fact it really did arise out of one person in particular. It may make it that you feel uncomfortable keeping me in the running, and I understand that. But what I'm hoping that you will ask yourself is that before you saw all of this, would, you, would I have been the person that you would have selected? And if so, I hope that you will go beyond what social media is trying to do, and that they are trying to eliminate someone from your choices. You guys are doing a great job in staying very independent, being thoughtful. I even really respected the fact that this morning, the very first thing you did is because of the, all of the emails that came in, you said, we need to address this with everyone. So I really, really appreciate that. Is that too long of an answer? But that's the truth. If that is your answer, it's not too long then. Okay. Uh, any any follow up with, uh, with that answer? Rhonda. I appreciate the answer. Uh, so just to put it out there, your political affiliation would be independent. Is that correct? Um, if you ask me, I mean, yes, the gentleman that wrote in, he'd say a Republican. And if you ask some of my Republican friends, they would say that I'm Democrat. So, um, I'm I, so, so one of the, one of the interesting things that, that this gentleman wrote was, um, he, apparently he has been keeping track of the signs that I've had in my front yard, which I find amusing. And he has seen that there were a lot of Republican signs in my front yard. I, this tells you how focused this individual is on what is what is Amna and her life. Um, so, uh, so I have supported um, re Republican candidates. I did have two signs in my yard this go round for Republicans. Um, in the past, I've had some uh, Democrat Democratic signs. So, you know, it, it, it depends. It depends on the race. And really, the last four years have really turned so many things upside down. Um, I am all for the best person, and my kids have heard me say this, I'm all for the person that's doing things for the right reason, that has high integrity, and are doing things for the betterment of our country, our city, our state, whatever they're running for. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, we covered all of our questions. I got one more. Okay. Okay, uh, the final question is, and you've spoken a little bit about this, but if you want to elaborate more on it, mm -hmm. um, how do you envision the relationship between the executive director and the commissioners? And more specifically, how would you approach communicating with us both on an individual and as a group? Mm -hmm. So I'm very familiar with the Open Meetings Act and um, I'm very happy that your next hire is going to hire an attorney that will help all of us navigate that smoothly. Um, so whatever communication I have, it will be in conjunction with the Open Meetings Act. Um, in my history, there are certain regulations that you need to follow as far as if you need to talk to somebody on a commission, um, how many people need, do you need to be present? Of course, if you're making decisions, you're discussing something openly. Um, so I will absolutely follow the Open Meeting Act. Um, I want to continue to get to know all of you individually. And there has to be some work that's gonna be done outside of a Zoom meeting. And that's the role of the executive director is to do that background work so you can be the decision makers. You can make the decisions 
with the best information going forward. Um, and it's, you know, when I first got on our planning commission 20 years ago, and I thought, man, I don't know anything about street construction or house building or, and once I got on the commission, they said, no, 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 we provide that information for you. You don't have to become a subject matter expert. We, we provide that to you. We spoon feed you. And that's what you as commissioners need to have. And so your executive director needs to be able to get you the information that you need and work in conjunction with you to do so. Um, one of the things that I did as I prepared for this, um, this meeting is I spoke with Daniel Claypool, who's the executive director in California. And um, his information really was um, so helpful. I mean, it was really provided the insight that I needed to say, is this something that I would be good at? And it is because um, it's cute. I'm going to read from my notes a little bit because um, he had some keen insights. One of the things he said is, um, uh, no matter how much time you think you have, there isn't enough time. And it's up to the executive director to keep moving that forward, to keep the team moving forward and keep them on schedule. Um, another thing he said is the executive director is a constant vessel of bad news. <laughs> and I would never lie to you, I would keep it moving forward because they, um, as the executive director, I would work with you to create that timeline. I mean, that's the very first thing that has to be done, right? Get everyone to do the strategic planning, to get an agreement on the timeline and what needs to be done, put it in a calendar, make it visual, get agreement, and then make sure that there are enough meetings and enough time and enough opportunities to stay on schedule because it's only gonna get busier and not less busy. Um, and as he said, no matter what, you're already behind. Okay, any uh, follow-up questions, observations uh, based on that answer? Ah, hearing none. Um, we thank you for being here and do you have any questions of us or any final comments? I do. Um, what are you as commissioners most concerned about you about? Because that would help me as the executive director help you uh, reach your goals. Anybody? MC, what are you most concerned about? Good question. I'm not sure. I really feel pretty good about us, honestly. Good. Rebecca. Yeah, I was going to say, <clears throat> I'm really most concerned about someone who's going to run an independent, clean process because we are already all expecting that there will be legal challenges to anything we do. Yep. And as an attorney, I don't want anyone giving ammunition to either side. Um, and the more improper things are done, the harder it becomes for people to recognize our work, recognize what we're trying to do and to respect it. So that's my biggest concern. I want someone who's going to run straight and narrow and not engage in any monkey business. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I agree wholeheartedly. Um, I know that it's probably going to be difficult for you to see beyond what was submitted to you today, but absolutely. I am the person that would do that. I would bend over backwards to make sure that, that all of the work is beyond reproach. Um, even though, as California and Arizona said, there still will be lawsuits, but as long as you have it based in fact, and they understand how you made your decisions, uh, you know, it's gonna be good. This is gonna be such a good process. This is gonna be so good with our outcomes. It's like a big project management. It's like a big project that has to be managed. And um, I have a lot of experience in that and I absolutely could bring you home. Yes. Uh, Anthony. I would say uh, my biggest worry is, you know, making sure at the end of this that the map we've come up with is indeed evidence and data based and as unbiased as possible. Um, you know, we've said earlier, I don't think we're going to make everybody happy. Right. And we are going to come under some public scrutiny um, eventually, no matter, you know, no matter how our map ends up. Right. Not everyone's going to like it. And, you know, the fact is you can't satisfy everybody, but as long as we do, 
you know, what the best practice is and what the evidence points us to without having bias, uh, I feel pretty confident that we can achieve that goal. Mm -hmm. And I think that your, um, uh, your deliberations so far have really shown that. You've had really thoughtful conversations. Um, I, even when it came to choosing the um, chair and co-chair, um, really thoughtful, great decisions that you came up with. And I just think that you're all headed in the right track. And with the executive director, it will, I think it'll provide the stability for you to know that, you know, you have the backup that you need and the staff that you need. A lot of experience in human resources, hiring people, getting people on board, getting them trained. Um, I can do all of that and budgeting, all of that and more. Okay. Uh, thank you for being here today. We appreciated uh, your candor. Uh, and um, hopefully uh, you won't, I guess, I, I hope you won't feel that we're going to place undue, uh, undue credit to this person that you're talking about that's uh, using social media. Um, however, it's a fact of life nowadays, unfortunately. Absolutely, absolutely, yep. Um, we, we will not have a decision today. We will uh, take our time uh, in uh, choosing who we feel will be the best person. Uh, so don't, uh, don't sit on your mailbox Friday and expect an answer. Uh, however, we will in fact uh, let everybody know that participated in uh, our interviews as to what the re uh, result is. Uh, again, once again, we thank you and uh, good luck and have a rest of the good week. Thank you. And Oops. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next is Vicki DeVold. Any comments before we get to, get to Vicki? We're running, in case you haven't been keeping track, just about 30 minutes a person now. And uh, everyone, just a quick note on time. I, I said this earlier, but just to emphasize, um, we do have until two o'clock with the translators and others. So once you finish up this interview, you'll still have some time uh, to figure out your next steps before the end of the meeting. Okay, everybody set. Uh, we can uh, bring uh, Vicki in. There you are, Vicki, please unmute yourself. Ta-da. Hi, how are you? Uh, we're fine, how are you? Great, hello everyone. Hi. Have you been watching us? I came in about maybe 40 minutes ago or so, 30 minutes ago, yes. <clears throat> uh, well. Uh, we've introduced ourselves each time with the exception of the last person who said, I already know you. I've watched all your introductions. Have you watched our introductions? I have, and I'm okay with those. Okay. Thank you. Uh, do you want to be called Vicki or Ms. DeVold, or how would you prefer to be recognized? Vicki is okay. Thank Our you. Feel free to use our first names if you have to, or any other name you feel appropriate for us. Uh, okay, then uh, we will launch in a little about the process. Uh, we have uh, four people or three people designated as questioners. And after each of your responses, uh, if, we, if any of the commissioners have a uh, follow-up uh, question based upon your response, uh, we'll, we will ask those. Uh, so that's kind of the uh, broad strokes about how this process uh, will continue. Any questions about the process? No, thank you again okay. for explaining it. All right. Okay, first up uh, on our hit parade is Dustin. Good afternoon, Vicki. Um, Hello. Bro broadly speaking, why are you interested in this position and the work of the um, 
Independent Citizens Redistricting Commission in Michigan. Okay. I've always believed that services related work in the most is the most rewarding. Knowing that my job is, is a part of a larger initiative to maintain and improve public um, life in the public sector keeps me motivated and happy. I've also applied for this um, particular position because it fits really well with some of my past board experience that I've had working um, within a board arena. Okay, any follow up uh, on that response, uh, Rhonda? What part of the redistricting commission itself, the whole process, are you excited about? Is there something particular about the whole redistricting that made you want to apply for this? It's just being a part of something bigger, being a part of a challenge, just um, being aware of the things that is going on within the local communities and knowing that it, you know, th this is a need. This is a need that everyone um, within the, the communities, the constituents within the communities should be excited about and just revamping and redoing um, the, the mapping lines within the, the community. So I'm just happy to apply for this and to be a part of something bigger um, that is going to benefit everyone. Okay, any other follow-ups? Okay, Doug. Uh, good afternoon, Vicki. Uh, Hi. You, can you tell us uh, about a time when you had to uh, facilitate a decision or consensus between multiple different people, organizations, and political parties? So working among a board, um, I was a part of the KSP board for about 12 years. Um, and I played various roles on that board, um, president, vice president, and grievance chair. So it was a time um, when we had some different complaints coming in from our staff um, regarding some behavioral issues and um, some career development issues. So our board um, stayed up many nights working on these complaints and trying to come to a consensus of how we're going to change some of the contract language, language within the contracts. And so what we had to do is um, we had to go out into the buildings and speak with the different staff members and also try to write down some the data from them and come back together regarding the complaints and what can we change in the contract. And of course, when we're dealing with contracts, we had to do a lot of negotiations um, with the other party. But we wanted to include our staff because we wanted to get some input from them is the, you know, the. Vicki, you uh, muted yourself. There you well, go. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. Is the contract um, language, was it too lenient? Was it hard to understand? Um, everybody has their different interpretations of a contract. And so by us going out into the buildings and speaking with the staff that gave us um, better decision making um, skills and prompts when we got back together so we can come to a consensus of what contract language to change, where to start in the contract to change it, um, and then how we were going to negotiate that contract um, change of language with the other party. Did, um, given the example you just talked about, did you facilitate that whole process or were you just a member of the team that worked on it? I was the president at that time, so I played a big part in facilitating um, the process and the things that we needed to put together. So yes, I started the initial facilitation, but again, I have to say that we as a board, we worked together. Um, we came together and we decided, you know, who was going to go in this building and who was going to, you know, go into the secondary buildings. We have a lot of buildings um, within the school environment, and so we had to split them up and go in and, and speak with the staff so we can come back together as a whole and figure out the contract language and where we're going to change it at. And it was a very um, tedious job. And it also, um, we had to stay some long nights together, but we did get it done and we did, were able to negotiate it with the other party. Has any of your experience dealt with political parties or just the organizations you've worked with? 
not necessarily political parties, no. Um, I have, of course, supported different political parties, but it's been within um, a government environment, which is the school sector. Okay. On your resume, on your highlighted achievements, you indicate uh, working on a, as a person, personal executive facilitator. Can you explain in detail your role as that, uh, in, in, as, as that personal executive facilitator? Absolutely. Um, many of my jobs um, that I've worked in within the different organizations um, you know, was similar to the executive director role. Um, within the nursing environment, I was the facilitator um, right underneath the administrator. So we were working very, you know, very diligently together to support the nurses um, and the patients or the residents um, that was in the nursing home. So we facilita I facilitated many me meetings um, together uh, with the staff, um, the lead nurses and the marketing director, as well as the kitchen staff as well, too. So we did a lot of training, uh, facilitated a lot of training, professional development, um, as well as being a part of professional development uh, within a school environment as well for our staff. We needed to train our staff on with the computer literacy, and we put some professional developments together for our staff at that time. Okay. And one last question. Uh, on your, sure. Again, um, on the objective section, you indicate that you're skilled at building strong working relationships. Uh, could you talk about those skills? Sure. Um, within um, both of those environments that I've just explained, I feel that being a part of a team um, is the greater cause, is the greater need um, within the team base. So building teams and being supportive, um, also having the correct data at hand um, when we are speaking and collaborating and just being able to support each other um, and being a rock for each other. So team building and working in a team environment, I feel is great in any organization. We have to teach our staff um, and we have to be role models for our staff and making sure that they can collaborate with each other. And if there's any issues at hand, we have to show them and help them how to resolve them. So we're here to, to promote a service. We're here to help um, others. And when you're in a nursing home environment, um, the others is the patients. When you're in the school sector, the students and the families is our clients. So the staff have to be able to work together and then the leadership in, within those organizations have to be able to come together um, as a team and model that professionalism to the staff. Thank you, Becky. I'll turn it over to you, Steve. Thank you. Oh, I wanna get Rhonda in there. She's been trying to get this question. <laughs> My question is very quick and it's just for clarification because I do come from a small town and during our subcommittee, I assumed, and I don't like to assume because you know the saying, KPS, what does that stand for? I'm sorry, you're muted again. I'm sorry about that. Technology. <laughs> um, KPS is Kalamazoo Public Schools. Okay, that's what I thought. I just wanted to clarify. Thank you. No, no problem. Thank you for asking. Okay, any other follow-ups from anybody uh, based on that response? Okay. Dustin, are we back to you? Okay, Vicki, uh, one thing that we're interested in is how you engage in strategic planning. What processes have you found useful and where would you start with the work of the commission? All right. Um, strategic planning to me is a process. It's considered a process. It's strategy or direction and, you know, focusing on the direction at, at hand and where we're trying to go with the resources to come to an end goal. Um, I feel that within the strategic process, um, I will work with each board member. Um, I will create a list. Um, I am very systematic as well, and I'm very proficient um, in Word and Excel. So I will go ahead and work with each board member, um, be an attentive listener, create um, goals, and create the outcome within the spreadsheets, um, and then making sure that um, we meet those goals. I believe and um, use 
using the STAR tactic, which is defining what the task is, reinforcing the task, making sure the goals are there, and and are reachable. So we, when we do set our goals, we want to make sure that we have reachable goals um, to achieve. So just the strategic process really starts with within us, within the board um, and the executive director, and just making sure that process runs smoothly and just making sure that we are attentive and on time and on task um, to the goal that we are trying to accomplish. Okay, any follow up to that response? All right, Anthony. Hello, good afternoon. Hi. Um, I have two questions for you today. The first okay, being- Okay, thank you. Anytime. Uh, the first being, um, do you have a political party affiliation and have you made any political party contributions in the past? Okay, um, very interesting question. So I um, am a Democratic. Um, however, uh, I have done my research. So when I get ready to um, vote, of course, at the polls, I don't just vote all Democratic. I do my research on the individuals. And yes, I have voted for some Republicans because I feel that they were the person for the job. And then I've in return have voted for some Democrats as well. Um, because again, I've done research and I feel that they're the right person for that job. Um, any um, supportive, I've been supportive of, of the, the city clerks. I've been supportive of the county um, commissioner, um, one in particular particular here in the Kalamazoo area. And um, I'm very supportive of the city commissioners as well. So I have um, helped out with different um, campaigns. And again, one of the board members of the Kalamazoo Public Schools, I'm supportive of him in that area too. Wonderful. Um, is there any follow-up from anybody? Rhonda? When you say supportive, does that mean you've made contributions to different lit or to whether it be somebody running or what have you? Yes, a couple of those that I've list um, just named or listed. Yes, I have made um, different, you know, small contributions, but mostly on the just the campaigning side, maybe making some phone calls for um, um, sending some blast emails out, just trying to be very supportive in what area that I can help them in. Okay, can I ask party affiliation? I know it's an uncomfortable question, but we've mm -hmm. asked everybody to put everybody on the same field. No, I, I don't know if I answered it earlier. Um, I, the, the party affiliation is uh, democratic, but I, again, um, kind of feel a little towards the nonpartisan side as well, because when I vote, I do vote for, um, like I said, the Republican that is best for the job. And, and again, I voted for some Democrats all on the same ticket before. I apologize, Vicki. That question as far as the party, um, the contributions, was it to a particular party? Were the, the people you contributed to in both parties, because you said you supported different candidates? Was it, you know, multiple parties? Or okay. Was it one that that's what I was asking. Oh, okay. Thank you for the clarification. Um, one of them was in the Republican and then um, one of them was over there in the Democratic and the one on the school board was more of nonpartisan. Thank you. You're welcome. Dustin. Uh, Vicki, you mentioned um, that you uh, did like a lot of um, like email campaigns and voted door knocking. Would you say that your contributions were more voluntary on a voluntary basis or were they more financial or were there any financial contributions out of curiosity? Sure, no problem. The financial contributions um, were small. So I did a lot of volunteering. I just didn't want to say I never did any um, financial contribution. I wanted to be honest, I did. Um, they were small, but it was mostly of the volunteer part because I have the administrative background. So I tried to help in, in writing you know, letters or like you said, door to door or email because I have that administrative background to help them out in. Thank you. 
Any other uh, follow-ups uh, for Vicki on uh, that response? Okay, any other follow-ups uh, on any of the questions? Well, I got one more. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so how do you envision the relationship between the executive director and us as commissioners? And with that, how would you approach communicating with us both on an individual basis and as a group? I envision the relationship between the executive director and the commissioners to be open, to be honest, transparent, solid communication, um, both ends being great listeners, attentive listeners on time, um, ready to work, ready to complete the task at hand, um, following the open meetings act, of course, um, and just making sure that we are being respectful towards one another with the opinions and views and thoughts that we have that we're going to yeah. bring to the table. Um, but at the same time, um, just also, I, you know, really see the executive director being the backbone, um, putting things together, making sure everyone's on time, making sure everyone's completing all projects in a timely manner, and just making sure everyone stays on task. So kind of the enforcer behind it, um, which you, you guys going to be more of the brainstorming and, and putting the things together, the data together, and executive director, um, which I will use a lot of quantitative charts. Um, I like using charts um, in Excel. I like putting charts together, putting the information in the charts, and then having a goal section there of where is the finalization, where's the goal, where are we trying to get to, and then have a time frame section within the chart. I think quantitative charts are very easy easy for me to use and it's very self-explanatory and it's easy to understand um, when you are putting things in charts and you can see it better, you can visualize it better and you have a target, a goal and an end goal and a time frame there of what needs to be done. Great, any uh, follow-up from any of the commissioners uh, on that response? And again, any follow-up on any of uh, Vicki's responses that the commissioners would like to ask at this time. Okay. Um, the, uh, are, are there any questions that you have? First, we'd like to thank you for being here today. We appreciate uh, you taking your time and uh, meeting with us and uh, providing your forthright answers. Um, are there any questions that you would have of us and any final comments that you would like to make? A couple of questions from you guys. Um, what is going to be your immediate need right now from the executive director? Anybody? The higher one. <laughs> <laughs> I, I would see it as uh, uh, getting involved in developing the, uh, the, the strategic plan and, and the detail plan on what we've got to do to go forward. Thank you. I would say the, uh, one of the immediate needs are uh, staffing. Uh, obviously, we're at the stage of, of uh, hiring an executive director couple other positions that we've uh, advertised for, we'll be dealing with upcoming. Um, we certainly don't expect uh, you to be the typist uh, in this uh, game plan. Uh, so figuring out what the staff will be, um, we need to have uh, set up some, we need to set up some webinars uh, dealing with uh, census mapping, communities of interest, et cetera. Those, uh, all of the nitty gritty that's going to be uh, coming up. Um, so Thank you. Um, those are, uh, you know, basically uh, uh, wh whoever the executive director is gonna sit down and say, ah, what do we need to do? And I'm already behind. Uh, that's the way we feel. So you shouldn't be any different. <laughs> all right, thank you. Thank you for that clarification. And then my last question is, um, what characteristics are you looking um, to see in the executive director? Anybody? Hi, this is Doug. I'm, I'm looking for somebody that communicates well, 
someone that can coordinate uh, among um, multiple different uh, parts of the organization, somebody that can navigate the uh, Michigan State government if necessary. Um, that's basically what I'm thinking at this point. Rhonda. Rhonda. <laughs> On the personal side, obviously, honesty, integrity, transparency, and somebody who has a definite attention to detail because there will probably be things coming at them from every which way and they need to be well organized and detail oriented to take care of every little aspect that will need to be done. Um, Vicki, I'll also say someone- Thank you both. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Sometimes there's a sound <laughs> delay. Um, someone that is almost like a steady stream in that um, they are not easily frazzled. So a little bit of a, a tough skin, but um, the ability to kind of slow time because we all come with different levels of experience. Um, right. We're going to have to be doing a lot of the, the hive work. And so the executive director mm -hmm. is going to have to um, have a pulse of what's going on with the commission would also be able to get the work done um, kind of more externally, if that makes sense. So that makes balance sense. Thank to you. me is very necessary. Thank you. Okay, anybody else? Any final comments you would like to uh, leave us with? I appreciate you taking the time out to interview me. Um, I am excited. I feel that I will be a great fit um, because of my background with already working with boards for maybe the past 12 years, um, working in the public sector for the last 20 years. Um, I am a great communicator, I'm an effective listener, um, and always very um, detailed and work hard at what I'm doing and trying to make sure to complete all tasks and to make sure everybody else is doing their part in their job as well. So again, thank you. I am honored to uh, apply for this job and to be selected um, as a finalist. Thank you, everyone. Right. Well, we thank you for uh, participating. Um, to let you know what the process will be from this point, uh, we, we will not be making a decision today. We'll be thinking over uh, all of uh, the interviewees and what they've said. And so uh, don't sit on your mailbox uh, Friday and anticipate a letter. You're probably not going to get one. Um, but we will let you know, as we've told everybody, uh, the decision that we ultimately make. So. Um, you can expect a response as soon as we, we make it. Again, we thank you and uh, have a pleasant week. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, it's uh, 1.22 and that was our last interview. We have uh, some time to discuss uh, what has taken place thus far. And the candidate uh, is still present. Not that, I mean, it's live either way, but, oh, okay. They just left the meeting. <laughs> okay. Uh, and at this point, uh, we've been at it. So let's take, uh, we've got time. Let's, let's take a break until uh, 1.30. That's seven minutes.
We're in the home stretch. Anybody else feeling really like, holy moly, I'm in front of a screen. <laughs> oh my gosh. I'm thinking I need to get a better chair for these long ones because at this point my back is yelling. <laughs> yeah. Oh gosh. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. I, my, um, my spouse, she, she got me one of these. It's, it's a little, it's like a pillow for this very thing. It's, um, it's called the purple pillow or something like that. Yeah. The purple. Nice. Nice. So if it's, if it helps you, like I'd, I'd love to give it to you, but <laughs> Well, Rhonda, that's one way to one way to keep awake, be uncomfortable. The only bad thing is I do a lot of this during the meetings. So. Yeah. <laughs> I just can't wait to get old so the aches and pains become something I'm used to. <laughs> you know, I blame mine on the military. <laughs> I do. Yeah. I was in my 20s when I was in there in the first episode of Back Issue, I was... 21 years old. So <laughs> a lot of marching in boots and doing PT and boots that really aren't all that comfortable and a lot of heavy lifting, it'll do it to you. <laughs> I can't get my uh, video to start for some reason. But I can see everybody else. And, and we can hear you, Doug. The host just did it, yeah. There we are. Uh, sorry if my microphone was cutting in and out. There's like 19 different settings on this bad boy, and it can pick up sound sideways and backwards, and I think I turned it off to not pick up my voice from the front. Sounds high-tech, Dustin. Hey, how's how's uh, how's your starter doing? Have you have you had a chance to do anything with the starter? Yeah, I also took half of it and made one for my mom, and she's been using it too. But we've done the I've done the sourdough crackers; those are delicious. I like those too. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great. Because my uh, computer does not have a audio on it. I have to go through my phone. Well, we're going to take care of that sooner or later. I hope so. When are we supposed to be getting those computers? I just approved the purchase yesterday, and according to Sally, that'll go through. So I would imagine a couple of weeks. Yeah, you know, ten days somewhere in that neighborhood. Uh, oh, okay. Just I, the phone just came to to my my house here. Right now, today, I just yep. opened it up. Really? Mine's coming by FedEx today. Oh, did? Really you got your phone today? Yep. Oh, okay. Mine's supposed to come tomorrow. Okay. I don't know if I got tracking information. <laughs> I just got something today. I don't know if it's my phone. Just came. Well, I, didn't get it. I didn't get any tracking information. It just showed up. Well, I have, uh, I'm signed up for the FedEx delivery manager, so I get notifications before any package comes to my house, whether it's FedEx or UPS or the Postal Service, so I got a text yesterday saying it was coming, but that's just because I signed up for that. Yeah, I'm the same way. We, we might all be here. Yes, Where's everyone's here. If you're not here, raise you your hand. <laughs> Aaron, Aaron had to step out. Yeah. Um, okay. All right, we've uh, interviewed six people. Um, I, I personally thought the interviewees were uh, did a nice job on the whole. Every, everybody did a good job. I was duly impressed. I, I, you know, some did better than others, but you know that's what makes the world go round. I think um, it went well. We have uh, Cynthia. You're waving at me. I just wanted to thank the subcommittee that um, whittled it down for us. I think you did a great job. Those were great candidates. I agree. We should have let them go the rest of the way and whittle it down to one. We wouldn't have any. <laughs> um, I think you guys did great too. Yeah, that's a that's not an easy job. I do not envy, <laughs> even though I reviewed the, um, um, the level of work that that took. How do we want to move forward with this? We do have uh, 
we certainly have some time uh, right now, um, or we can uh, wait and contemplate and go over our notes and go back over the um, the CVs that were sent in, the resumes that were sent in. I know the um, the mayor, I'll call her. Um, I did not, uh, since I was having some computer trouble, I did not see these uh, messages she's talking about from this one person. So I want to go back and look at those. But uh, I, I'm sure. Hold on. <laughs> I'm certainly um, open to whatever suggestions there are. Uh, yeah. Um, quickly, and then can I call on you? Know? <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I I think you know maybe it would be beneficial to discuss initial impressions, but then still go back and review because. Um, you know, people present one way on paper and then there's just a lot to think about and I want us all to have input on that. So I think utilizing this time to share, like I said, impressions um, and then maybe we can think about narrowing it down to a few people when we go back and review. But then I want to hear Rhonda and Dustin and anyone else who wants to share. So Rhonda, you're up. Hey, I agree with you, Brittany. I think it would be best if we start to review, you know, highlights, lowlights, things we found positive and not mm -hmm. um, with each candidate, why right, it's fresh in our minds since mm -hmm. we just finished it up. Because if we wait a week or so, it, it'll be gone. Um, mm -hmm. And I saw all of us taking notes, I think. So I think we would be better off starting right away while it's fresh. Yeah, Dustin. Yeah, I, I also agree. However, uh, with that said, um, <laughs> I, uh, being part of the subcommittee and having reviewed all the resumes, uh, yeah. everyone's resume was basically stuck in my mind for the, for these interviews. And I did take some extensive, and I mean extensive notes on everybody. I was typing away the whole time. And I already have a top two. Me too. <laughs> so it's, I mean, I, I, I have it. I don't necessarily know if I should share them right now because everyone else may, you know, want to look at things a little more in detail, but I actually have everyone ranked one through six. So um, if you want to know, I'd be happy to share. But like I said, everyone is, you know, can have their own thoughts. I think I have a top three myself. Uh, Anthony, you're on mute. First, I want to, oh, well. can you hear me now? Yep. Cool. Well, first, I just want to thank, you know, all six interviewees that came, you know, and interviewed with us today. Uh, this is going to be a hard decision for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and I think personally, I think we'd be OK probably with any of the six that we interviewed. Um, but with that said, I do have three as well that kind of stood out to me. So I like Rhonda's idea of taking time to, like, go back and, uh, you know, further deliberate. <laughs> But I wonder if maybe we all want to go and just real quick say our initial impressions, um, if that would be a good idea. Let me let me just say uh, while we're deliberating and we're talking about uh, naming people or not naming people, uh, realize that probably all of them are watching us. That's right. Of course. Yeah. And I guess my personal preference is, uh, while I'm sure everybody has uh, who they think are in the top three, the top two, the top one, the top four, however you want to say it, um, I would uh, think that we would be uh, better served not to do that at this stage, uh, just out of courtesy. To the individuals and uh, to give us an opportunity uh, to go back and look uh, over, um, re I, you know, I want to review my notes. Like I've said, I want to review these these uh, uh, resumes and CVs and the other stuff that we. I can tell you, I did not get an opportunity to look at the stuff that came in last night. As I said, my I was my printer was going crazy, so. 
but uh, you know, I will certainly bend to the will of the commission if, uh, if that's what everybody wants to do. But that's that's my observation. Doug. Our next scheduled meeting won't be till December 4th. So that's two weeks out. So that goes back to Rhonda's point. We're not putting it off for, for so long. I also Don't think. Uh, oh. Who's, who wants to talk? Yeah. <laughs> you, look, you look like you were first. Go ahead. Yeah, but then I know it was Rhonda, Dustin, and Juanita, like all at the same time. Um, I I hear what you're saying, and I would like to think that I am a fairly um, both compassionate and empathetic person, as well as professional. Um, I do, though, think that there are moments in life that it's just as this is kind of the way it is. This was already an unusual process to be interviewed live and then to hear, uh, you know, hear the person in front of you interview, unless you're in a group interview setting for something. Um, and I think it's also perfectly normal. You know, I think we're all professionals to debrief after something like that. I just worry with a stretch of two weeks that we won't get a chance to bond, you know, bond meaning discuss as a commission, what our initial um, impressions um, were. And I think the benefit, much like we had the subcommittee, is some information, we can always go back, Steve, you can always review, but I think some information in hearing, you know, our fellow commissioners' opinions will help us to consider and add light to maybe some things that we weren't um, exposed to. And of course, go back and read on your own, but I think there's a great benefit to a shared discussion. Um, Rhonda, then Dustin, and Juanita. I'm going to let Juanita go because we haven't heard too much from her today and I've talked a lot. So, <laughs> okay. I think I was only going to say, I almost forgot my thought, but I only was going to say that perhaps um, someone said that we're not going to meet till when? December 4th. Day was December 4th yeah. Okay. Um, I thought we were having a meeting tomorrow or is it just my little group that those are the communication? Yeah. Well, December, the next meeting for the full group, according to my schedule, is December 3rd. Full commission meeting, review finalists, schedule interviews. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Well, we probably need to do something about the voting that today about something, do something towards it that we can kind of narrow that down to maybe less than three or four. You probably need to narrow it. Yeah. Uh, and then just, you know, because we got to get busy <laughs> and someone is looking, it's like I got a stack of papers for the communication. Who's working with me on that tomorrow? Okay, we got a stack this big that came in yesterday. Yeah. And I mean, I stayed up all night working with that and I'm like, yeah. you know, so we got, we can't get too stuck on some of this stuff. I was listening today to everybody. You all did real good in asking questions and whatever. And the candidates were all fine. Uh, but I had a couple that I thought was extremely rounded in what they could do for us. Mm -hmm. so. Hey, Rhonda, you were up and then Janice. I was just reiterating the point about you know your first impressions and having it fresh in your mind we go two weeks it, it's going to fade even when I we did the first subcommittee I had to go over those resumes multiple times after that because they do all yeah. blend together so I mean we're getting down here to about 15 minutes yeah left. I was going to say the really time. Think we need to start discussing Janice um, well, also, it says on the third, we're supposed to be onboarding the executive director. Doesn't that mean we should have them figured out by then? If we're so onboarding are, are, them? Are we talking about making a decision to hire an executive director in the next 15 minutes? That's no, what I'm talking but, about. I mean, according to our um, schedule on the third, we're onboarding the dire executive director. So I, I don't know that. when. I understand that. But I, I tell you right now, I am really very uncomfortable with making a decision on this person in the next 15 minutes. Well, I agree. And that's why I said, I think that we need to meet and we need to talk as a group. You know, maybe you saw something in somebody that somebody else didn't. You know, your impression might be different, you know, or maybe, you know. So I really think that maybe we should have a different another meeting in between then and now. 
in that. Sally, Sally has come on with her wonderful appearance is going to help us out, <laughs> aren't you? Hey everybody. Yeah, so just on, on the subject of the schedule, I wanted to provide some clarity. I mean, the sort of draft agenda items that we drafted, you know, back in September and then again in October, those are fluid. Um, we are obviously planning on the dates that you all have already planned on and and you know we're making sure we've got the translators and everything for them if you all need to do another meeting between now and then um that's something we can figure out if we can pull it off um in terms of the behind the scenes stuff but you guys do have the autonomy to call another meeting if you need one that said you've got 15 minutes now um and so i would recommend using this time to figure out what you want your next meeting to look like and then maybe you can talk about um you know, if December 3rd is acceptable for that or not. For example, if you were to do, you know, follow-up interviews with some people, or if you wanted to like meet again and discuss all six yeah. again or whatever it might be. So um, that's how I'd recommend spending the last 15 minutes and the Department of State, we're here to assist and be helpful. Um, and if you need another meeting, then we can we can figure out how to make that work. Well, I, I would propose <clears throat> that we have another meeting and looking at the, at the calendar, and quite frankly, that may be tough with Thanksgiving in here. I think we need to just, I, you know. But, mm. uh, <laughs> let me let me let me say um, that that will then give us enough time to look that over and have a discussion. Uh, but so I propose another meeting between now and the third. I agree. Can I put my last two cents and then I'll go with what the group says. We had these schedules. We knew the subcommittee, we were reviewing two committee meetings. We were reviewing these. We had a meeting we where we narrowed it down to six where everybody should have did due diligence and went over those six as resumes. And now we knew that we were coming in here today to do the interviews, to discuss those six. I mean, this is just my personal opinion, but I don't wanna keep pushing things back for our timeline. We've had a set schedule and that's how I've prepared myself for all of these meetings. Um, I'm not throwing flack at anybody. I just feel like we're working backwards rather than forwards. MC. I'm just gonna, I'm twinkling with Rhonda. Oh. I'm ready. <laughs> Who's next? Cynthia. Cynthia. So I think that we will need another meeting. I mean, we're not all ready to make a decision today, even if we have thoughts. Um, I, I would like a little more time to re-go over things now that we've seen them in person. But um, I wonder, can we just give a little bit of our committee meeting time tomorrow? for us to come together again, even though, I mean, we're gonna need time as well, but I wonder if that's one way to accomplish it and it would still be kind of fresh. I guess that's up to the, uh, what, what are the committee, general counsel and communications director? You guys are meeting from 12 I, to 30. Yeah, we got, well, we've got two hours for each. Yeah. We need around 1230 hours. Isn't a whole lot of time. To get that I'd, up. I'd like to make a motion real quick, guys, because we don't have a lot of time. I do not mean to interrupt anybody, but I'd like to motion um, for the Department of State to try to get us another meeting between now and um, our next meeting, um, if possible. And I'd attach this motion. I'd also like to say, let's spend the next you know 15 minutes just giving our quick first impressions of these candidates to help us go forward. Is there a second? Okay. A second. Any discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 All, opposed, all opposed the same sign. Okay, Sally, uh, we wanna try to schedule another meeting between now and the third. Um, um, keep, keep us posted. Will do. Thank so, you. So, so on um, that, real quick. Um, talking. Oh, it's Dustin. Dustin. Dustin, by the way. 
Oh. Um, so, I mean, I do have a full-time job and me on the whim just saying to my boss, Hey, I need this day off. Doesn't really work all that well for the most part. Um, is there any way that a weekend could potentially work here either this or next, or even maybe even next Friday, since everyone's in anyway, and hopefully not going out shopping. I see, <laughs> no, I see Sally shaking her head vigorously. No. And I propose sure that Sally just give dates and then we do it that way. And we still I, haven't gotten into the discussion. Yeah. Commissioners, I can, I can uh, pull you of your availability and, uh, and then the department of state, knowing that you all want to call a meeting between now and December 3rd can find the time and notice the meeting and let you all know based on your availability. Does that work? Yep. Sure. Okay. Okay, you got uh, 12 minutes to talk about uh, your first impressions. Who's up first? Rebecca. Uh, I was going to say, do we want to just be systematic and go down based on interview times, like start with Brandon, let everybody offer their feedback, move on to Cheryl, then go to Jeanette? Does That's that make fine. sense? That's fine. That's good. Whatever the group likes. I would say everyone here go in, go and give their top two or three people instead. It'd would you faster. rather do that, Dustin? That'd be me. It'd be faster in my opinion. Okay. All right. Well, uh, you want to do option A or option B? <laughs> so let me just call people. I'll call on you when you can give your. Yeah, that works. Go ahead. Okay. Um, again, this is just off of my screen. I'm going to start with Rhonda and I'll leave myself and Steve to go last. So Rhonda. We're just going off from first impressions of somebody that we thought did very well, correct? Yeah, these are your top two yeah. to three. Okay. Uh, one of my top ones is Sue Ann Hammersmith. Uh, for the notes that I have for her, the positive is her experience. You cannot argue with 30 years of executive director experience and for just three jobs. So that gives it a lot of longevity. Obviously, if she had three jobs where she was ED for 30 years, she did a good job and they kept her. Um, I, she was seemed to be open and transparent. Um, she's had experience with the community engagement, as she said. So I thought that that was a plus. Um, she's no political affiliation, no contributions made. So as far as public view, I think that might be a good thing. So those are just a few of the things if anybody else would like to add about her. Do you have a second or just, is she just the one standing out to you? Like I said, she was my top and there were a couple of toss ups. So I, I would just like to get everybody else to have a chance if they had somebody that they were interested in. Okay. Doug. Doug, you're Ooh. next. Oh, okay. Um, I had my top three. My first one was Amna. Uh, I, I thought that, that she brought forward the, uh, the most organization or could bring forward the most organization. However, I'm a little concerned about the public opinion aspect of that. Uh, secondly, I had um, Brandon. I thought Brandon had a good experience. Great communicator in my mind, well prepared. And like Rhonda, Sue Ann was uh, my other choice. And MC? Um, so I was going off the, the idea of the, that we need a public servant um, and that we want sort of, that we're gonna have a steady stream of lots of complexity that has to be, and we need somebody who pays attention to detail and that can navigate the state of Michigan, uh, who understands that there's other, let's say bodies, but that Michigan is unique, that those bodies might not fit our state of Michigan. And that we have this, the um, Open Meetings Act has been like the number one thing um, that we, we together have navig tried to navigate and how we do our work. And the only person that I heard who has real live experience currently is Dr. Mitchell. And what I mean is she's, she, and what I also recognize is that every, each person had sort of an excitement that made me a little bit like, I like Dr. Mitchell's presence, meaning there was a calmness in her delivery. And she, she took up the full half hour without sort of 
bumping and I just I felt like there was a stoop, smooth steady pace and like I said Dr. Mitchell is the only candidate that I can see I'm willing to, to listen to others but I'm you know I, I I feel like she answered every question in ways and and like I said the criteria that I've heard some of you all say out loud I'm, I'm just yeah she's the she's the number one candidate for me Juanita well I thought that um Brandon Bryce was excellent, very rounded. He knew a lot about government. He looked, he had been around and he's uh, worked in a lot of, just a lot of different uh, things that we are about, uh, if I make it short like that. And also Dr. Cheryl Mitchell, I enjoyed her too. I thought those were my two best choices. I gave her a three and I gave him a four. Um, if we could interview both of those back or do something, that would be good. That's just my opinion. I enjoyed both of them. Oh, I'm sorry. I wanted to... uh, Mr. Uh, Bryce seemed like he's a go-getter. Dr. Cheryl seems like he's... <laughs> both of them seem very informed, but... Uh, he seemed like he's ready to go. And Dr. Cheryl seems he's a little laid back, but she's very knowledgeable. So. Dustin? I like both of them. <laughs> okay. Um, mine's a little different. Uh, my number one pick is Jeanette. Um, she <clears throat> actually took initiative to go start doing things as if she had the job already. Um, she conducted her own research. She uh, answered all the questions great. I mean, her resume is actually outstanding. Um, and she, she, just like us, is, you know, we got put into this thing without really knowing what the heck we were all doing. And look at us now. Um, she had, she, she showed um, the ability that she actually really wants the job by putting in a 60 day plan. No one else did anything like that. Uh, and no one asked her to do that as part of the, the process. And she took it upon herself to do those things. Uh, with that being said, the second person would be uh, Sue Hammersmith, just in regards to her experience. Um, uh, and that is, uh, that, that's basically what everyone else has said about her is what I would agree in. Uh, and then I do want to make my comment known. Um, I will not be able to look past the negative public comment from uh, Amna to be honest. Um, I mean, she, she was a great interviewer. She did she answered all the questions the way that you wanted to. She was honest about the fact that there was social media posts being put out. But when that happened, I started looking through all of the emails that were sent to us as well in regards to it. And I just will not be able to look past it. See ya. I'm gonna, I see your hand Rhonda, but I'm gonna, I gotta keep going or we'll never make it. We got, we got four minutes. Yep, uh, Rebecca. So we need to go rapid fire. All right, rapid fire. All right, so my top were Sue Ann and Cheryl, Dr. Mitchell. Um, I think Sue Ann's experience is incredible. She was very well presented. She seemed very organized. My only concern is she has more of a nonprofit background versus government, whereas Dr. Mitchell has that government background. To me, both of them were equal. I don't know how you would balance that out. Maybe we want someone with nonprofit. Um, Jeanette would be my third choice. And then um, with respect to Amna, not only did I read the citizen comments, but I also did some web digging on her. And there, mm -hmm. it's not just the web comments. There's um, 13 out of the 15 people who worked with her in city government, whether it was city commissioners, public school boards, opposed her election in 2019. And that's all out there, public information. You can look at it yourself. So I would not be able to get behind her if the people who work with her didn't want to work with her again. To me, that's a big issue. Um, and then with Brandon Bryce, I think he also came off as very competent. But I'm concerned about his affiliation with the Patriot radio station. Um, it's a conservative, Republican-based radio station. He is a commentator on that. And although he came off seeming like he's very independent, I'm concerned that about the impression of the view uh, in the public of that affiliation. Janice, thank you, Rebecca. Sarah, be quiet. Come on, Janice, do you want to add comment? Um, sure, I can tell you that my fir my top choices are Dr. Mitchell and Sue. Um, it's basically for all the reasons that everybody else said. 
Okay. So those are my top choices. Okay, Cynthia. So I won't give reasons because they've all been said, but I would like to say I would feel really comfortable with most of these people. Um, my, my top three are Jeanette and uh, Sue and Brandon. Okay, Anthony. So I have quite a bit of notes that we can discuss at a later time. But uh, just real quick, my the three that stood out to me most were Jeanette, uh, Jeanette Phillips, Brandon Bryce, and Amna Shebold. Um, I'm also concerned about the public comment. However, I think that if if we just go based on you know resume and qualifications, she's probably you know the most qualified and the best equipped to do the job. However, you know we all might have different opinions on that, so we might need to talk about it more. Um, with Jeanette, I agree with everything that Dustin said. She was very prepared and put together a plan. And uh, Brandon Bryce, um, I also think he'd do a good job. He might be not as, you know, have, he might not have as much experience as the other two, but just something about him makes me think that I could, you know, really enjoy uh, working with him. Richard. Because the time, I'll make this quick. Brandon Bryce and Sue Ann Hammerschmidt. Steve. I, I'm reserving my comments. From okay. The I said I wanted to look at the other things, so. Okay, I will quickly say um, my, my top choices were Dr. Cheryl Mitchell and Sue. Um, the Dr. Mitchell, to me, edged Sue a little bit because I found even though these were great selections, I found a lot of the candidates' responses to be evasive, particularly around um, party affiliation and funding. There were, um, Dr. Mitchell to me answered that question head on with no hesitation, whereas Sue, I found um, that not just with her, but there were a couple of times where we had to go back and react that question in a different way to actually get the answer. So I found, that to be um, a little troubling. I share thoughts on um, Amna. I have strong reactions to that, as well as strong strong reactions to Jeanette. Um, I felt that just the experience was not there, and that plan is something that we could easily ask another ED to do and execute for us. So I did not think that that made that to be a stick out quality for her. Okay, that uh, brings us to two o'clock and the uh, end of our meeting. Um, I make a motion that we adjourn. Is there a second, Brittany? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Okay. aye. Sally will be circulating um, potential dates and we'll try to set up another meeting. Until then, everybody have a nice weekend. Goodbye.